Hello, everybody. This is the Tulsa Native American Day virtual market. I am Lisa, your host from the Oklahoma Indian Festival, and we have joined together with Tulsa Native American Day to bring you the virtual market today and tomorrow. First up, we've got Shanna with 10 buffaloes. And Shanna, go ahead and unmute yourself. Hi, how are you? Doing well, how are you doing? I'm doing well for being a Sunday morning. Be, that's right. You you are actually um, not in Oklahoma at the moment, are you? No, actually, I'm located in Gig Harbor, Washington, just outside of Seattle, Washington. And um, tell me what tribes you represent today. Um, I currently am northern. Well, I'm currently. I am. Let me rephrase that. <laughs> Um, I'm Northern Arapaho, uh, Wind River Reservation. Uh, my mom's Ojibwe and Chippewa, so I kind of, my art reflects both of those cultures as well as the coastal because I grew up on the Pacific Northwest. So I kind of incorporate all of those into what I do. Beautiful. So it looks like you have a few pieces behind you. Can you tell us a little bit about what you make and what you currently have? what I do. Um, so I am, I do acrylic painting on canvas. I also do um, woodworking as well. So I do a lot of painting on wood. Um, I also carve. I also make cedar paddles, which unfortunately I don't have in this setup currently right now because some of them are a little too big. So what I have right now is I've got three paintings right here. This one is called Sundance. Um, Basically modeled after the planes, bustle helmet, bustle headdresses that they wear um, in typical kind of Sundance colors. And then I have this one right here, which is called Sacred. It's got the buffalo with the sage, the eagle feather, and of course representing the red handprint that we've all come to know and support throughout Indian Nation. Then I have this other one right here. Let me turn my camera. This one right here is called All Nations Dance. I'll show you a better picture here if you can see it. Minus the glare. Lighting is always tricky on these things. Yeah, it is. And I think it's my kitchen that's glaring it. Um, anyway, so this cup right here is the All Nations print based off of that acrylic painting. It represents the coastal, the Ojibwe side, as well as the plain side. It's modeled after my granddaughter who takes ballet. So I have that one, and then I have another one called Fancy is Our Ballet. I don't know if you can. So it's basically a ballet dancer that's got the shawl, and such and part of it's too because my daughter my granddaughter does fancy so i kind of took the two and mushed them together um i have a variety of cups with my artwork on it uh, i am working on a current thing right now i have a hand drum that i'm currently doing back up a little bit so when i do my art i'm really big on taking the images and putting them all together to make one cohesive, one, you know, whole image, because I think everything's intertwined in life. So to be able to take things and marry them just represents who I am because I am of different tribes. It makes up me and I believe it makes up everybody. Um, I also have another Christmas one that I've done. I've got some Christmas cards coming out at the end of the month with new stuff. I love to do play on word type things. So we all know Christmas is, Christmas is coming. So instead of reindeer, we have sockeye salmon. As I love that. And we have a coastal canoe. And who said Santa has to ha be, you know, have a white beard and everything else. So it's kind of my take on what I take from Christmas as far as commercialized goes. 
The other things that I do as well, because I go across so many different mediums when it comes to art. I also do wolf skulls as well. So the wolf skulls, these ones are from Wrangell, Alaska. They're 15 years old. My father-in-law sent them down to me. I had to clean them. And then I went through and I painted them. And all of these items and more, you can find on my shops. You know, if you go to my Facebook page, I have a Facebook shop. I have an Etsy shop. Um, what whatever. would those be, Shanna? Um, my daughter is supposed to be putting them in the comments. Oh, she's working on it. She's in my back office. <laughs> I can't talk and type at the same time. But you can find me at 10 Buffaloes art and custom work on Facebook on Etsy. I'm just, it's um, just look up 10 Buffalo's art and you'll find me there. Um, the other thing that I do, and I don't have any right handy cause they're behind me, but I know from the Oklahoma market, it started out there. Well, my tribal one started out there. I've been making masks. Oh, Forever. Um, Forever. I, I since March. I've been making um, tribal masks now. So I've had quite a few people ask me to make tribal flag masks. So I've done some for New Mexico. Um, I've actually done some, a few of them for Oklahoma and some locals there as well. Um, I also have my art on custom printed fabric too. So I have ribbon skirts with my artwork especially these two back prints right here are on fabric. Um, I have it on, like I said, ribbon skirts. I have it on face masks. I have them on pillows. So it's kind of been nice to kind of broaden myself out from just canvas and wood. Um, so um, do you have anything at any events coming up or any specials going on that people should know about? Or is there anything that is everything available for immediate sale today? Um, so right now, everything that you see on Etsy and everything you see on Facebook for sale today, I'm uh, currently adding more things pretty much every Sunday is my art day. So I'll be posting more things through the holidays. Uh, we are offering 30, um, anything over $35 or more automatically will get free shipping. Um, I have some of more items coming up. I have my art on t-shirts that'll be coming up here the, later this week. So um, I don't have any festivals going on. Washington state won't allow us right now. So I solely just do online things at this point. Well, I'm so glad you could join us here today. Oh, thank you. I, what do I got? A couple more minutes or? Yeah, you do. So uh, um, why don't you tell us about what inspired one, your favorite piece? My favorite piece? My favorite piece is the ballerina back there. And because of the fact that it is very visually, to me, it's very visually appealing. Um, it also, you know, holds kind of a dear heart to me because of my granddaughter who is in ballet. Um, I do also have a print. I think you also have this print as well, if I remember correctly. Yeah, I my second one that I absolutely love, and my mom has the original, um, is the, there we are. There we are. There we are. So this is my Mother Earth. Pray for us print. And I one love this favorite one. one. I love this one just because of the colors. I don't even think just looking at it online just does this piece any justice whatsoever. I mean, in person, it's great. You know, you've got your turtle, you've got your bear. Bear, of course, is after my mother because that's her animal. Um, the Pendleton that the lady is wearing is modeled after the Pendleton that someone gave my mother when I was born. And of course, my mother is Catholic. So there's a rosary in one hand with a feather. And of course, you know, being a female. So that's the other part that represents my mom. So I really, I really love this piece. I have it in cards. I have it in prints, eight and a half by 11 and um, 11 by 14s too, as well. 
I have it on mugs. I did have it on a skirt and a very nice lady in Canada bought it. So it has a good home. Dude, they brought the original. Huh? They bought the original. Um, the skirt, yeah, the original skirt that I had. Yes. Uh, so you remember seeing the that original on skirt? Yeah. Yes. So she bought that, and when she sent me a message, and it was like it's absolutely stunning, and she loved it, and then she bought another skirt from me. So I was like, oh, well, this is kind of cool. Someone said, show each painting. I have five minutes. Which painting? The paintings back here. <laughs> I have a whole bunch more too. Want to see another one? Here. Yeah. <laughs> I have them stashed down underneath my desk. That's the that's the fancy is our ballet. Again, I don't think oh. the computer does it justice when it comes to it. Oh, daughter says, kill my under desk light. This one is called Old Res. It's got the old style hat that um, I guess you could say they wore back in the day. Again, it's a buffalo skull. The blue up here is supposed to be abalone shells or represent abalone shells. I love abalone. Uh, Oh, so I had a question. Somebody wanted to know about making a purchase. Um, yes. Can they purchase live off of you today or should they go to the links? How should um, they do you that? Can, you can go to the links um, or you can just message me. I don't know. Can they message me off of this or do they need to go to Facebook? Um, they can on Facebook. They can go ahead and comment on Facebook okay. and um, contact you that way through there or message you. That works too. Okay, yeah, all, all this stuff is on my Etsy site or my Facebook shop too. But if you're, you know, see something you want to grab before somebody else does, then yes, please feel free to message me. Um, this is my other piece, another piece. Is that a new piece? Um, I don't think I've shown this one before. So this is what I, whoa, I'm turning it all different ways. This one is called Sun, Moon, and Spirit. It's very vibrant colors that are in it. Again, you've got, you know, the coastal in there, the Ojibwe style, which is a lot of this kind of stuff that goes into it. Um, buffalo, because my last name is Yellow Calf, and it comes off of um, Yellow Calf being the baby buffaloes. At one point in time, it used to be Yellow Buffalo Calf, but they took part of it out, obviously, because it was too long. Um, I Like I said, I have more paintings stored that I do as well. I think I already showed you the native do things, right? Yes. On one of our Thank other you. markets. Um, I can't reach it. I'm too short right now. <laughs> I am. All my, I'm running out of room in my office. It's like insane. You just are constantly remodeling all the time. Um, to, one second. One second. All Can you see that one? Yes. So this is my natives do things. Those are natives in a beat up thing chasing ponies across the prairie. Because my dream car is a beat up thing. I love you. I, really love those. I actually have it on a shirt now. It's actually pretty cool. It's got the whole oh, print. that would be cool. Print right across the chest. So, and that's online too. So, if you see a print and you want it on a t shirt, I can do it. And I've got ornaments coming out next. Just in time for Christmas, they make quick, great Christmas gifts. They do. I have a couple, but I'm ordering a whole bunch more. Most of my Christmas stuff is slowly starting to come in. So, for instance, is that a That's tile? Cool. Yeah, it's a tile. It's a it's a tile ornament. Oh, so, wonderful. Now you're going to be with us again tomorrow, right? Yes, and I will have tomorrow new things morning. tomorrow to show. How exciting! How exciting! Well, we can't wait to see you tomorrow. 
And um, we thank you for showing up today. We really appreciate you. Well, thank you. It was a little early. Uh, I'm still trying to get through my cup of coffee over here. <laughs> and, you, and so everybody knows, you know, 10 buffaloes, because I don't think we addressed this. 10 buffaloes is, no. <laughs> is named solely after the fact that I have, yes, 10 grandkids. And I just found out two weeks ago that we have a new one coming in March. In March. Congratulations. So now, I'm going to have to change the name now. Uh, no. <laughs> I believe in even numbers, not odds. So somebody else is <laughs> okay. Well, Jenna, again, thank you for your time. We appreciate you, and oh, we'll see you. you tomorrow. All right, sounds good. Thanks, guys. Bye, Bye Brand. Up next, we have Brandy with a Geechee stained glass. How are you, Brandy? <laughs> I'm good. I have a house full of kids, so. Um, just kind of bear with me. We are uh, where am I? Right here. Today is pumpkin day. Oh, how fun! Well, thanks for taking time out of your family day to join us today. Um, Brandy, can you tell us a little bit about who you are, where you're from, and what you do? Yes, uh, my name is Brandy, and I'm own a Geech stained glass in our business we have about three parts to it so we um, teach stained glass classes we make stained glass art do custom orders uh, we were just commissioned to do award pieces again which those always come out really good and they're the Geechee feathers on boards and they have um, the award plaques on them those are a lot of fun to make and so we do custom orders and stained glass pieces. And then uh, we also have art that's for sale in our okay. studio. And then we also sell supplies. So we're trying to keep up with, with the needs of ourselves and everybody else. And um, we've been staying busy. So uh, Sunday, this is my one day off. But I'm usually in the studio anyway. And I thought I'd be back up there. But um Pumpkin carving is a little bit harder than what I remembered it being. <laughs> so I should definitely keep my day job. I have a, lots of now I'm like, ah, oh, I'm just when we're doing these pumpkins, I'm thinking about all these gourd, you know, the gourd artists that carve all the gourds out and paint them. And I was like, I think the closest I came to it was this one. Let me show you. <laughs> Wait, no, this way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. That's coming along real well. Do you have any of your stained glass with you today, Brandy? Uh, you know what? I don't because I have, like, Shanna. I have 10. No, I don't have 10 grandkids yet. But I will be there someday, I'm sure. I have five grandkids. And I have, you know, kids, five kids of my own, too. So I believe, believe it or not, my home... I do not have um, very much glass work and uh, some more of my family is probably coming out here, not realizing that I'm live. I came outside. <laughs> I'm hiding. Out here. So I can't hide. you're hiding. No, there's, there's no hiding when you're a mom. So, but you'll be with us tomorrow. And will you be at the studio and be able to show us around tomorrow at the studio? Oh, yeah. Tomorrow it's all in the studio, all glass. We're going to pick up some more glass tonight. So I'm kind of on an artist high <laughs> because uh, we have some new glass and there's some new pieces I'm really wanting to do soon. And I'm just so excited. Um, I want to bring back some of the wheels that we haven't done in a long time. I'm sorry. Reagan. And <laughs> we, uh, I have a four directions wheel I want to do. So we have a lot of new stuff coming out. Christmas is coming out. So, uh, you know, the mini feathers go real well. We teach how to do mini feathers in classes. And um, we'll, we'll get some more things posted. But our website is agichi.com. And that's A-G-I-T-S-I. And, and we just put that in the comments for everybody to find. And in case 
in case you're just joining us, um, this is I'm Lisa and this is Brandy, and we are participating in the Tulsa Native American Day. It's a virtual mm -hmm. market. You can find us on Facebook or we're also streaming live on YouTube on the Oklahoma Indian Festival's YouTube page. So um, please let us know if you have any questions for Brandy or for any of our artists. We'll be here with mm -hmm. artists right up till five o'clock this afternoon. So um, be sure to be commenting on the original stream for us to see your questions though. But the artist, well, there's a little one. <laughs> so, okay. Hello. Okay. Bye. They all like to be on camera, don't they? They have no fear of being on camera. They've actually done pretty good. <laughs> Nobody's trying. Well, the lighting is beautiful outside there, so. Thank you. And we have been, I've been outside sweating and doing stuff all day. So and helping, I have, tomorrow you And will helping see us better... collect pumpkins. Okay, thank you. Yes, I did all the work. And um, so we'll definitely be on tomorrow in another setting and show some work and um, hopefully be able to give you a better view than this. <laughs> so it's fun. The way fun. you started than yesterday. Okay, good. Uh, good job. <laughs> so, Brandy, can you tell us if you have anything coming up here, any events, or you teach classes, don't you? Uh, yeah, we have, uh, we've opened back up to Saturdays, so Saturdays are where you can get online and book to do a group class, and we're still keeping the class size pretty low because we want to stay with the social distancing and keep everyone safe. But we are Yay. we are thankfully doing classes. Well, we have a question from Facebook for you, Brandy. When did you know that you wanted to continue the family tradition of stained glass? Well, it's always I've always wanted to do it. Um, it was something that actually um, I thought I was going to be doing with my mom, and um, and then when she had passed away, I was like, well, I need to still do it. And what I have now, though, is that I have my daughter doing, she works with me side by side, and I can have asked. So you have another generation joining? Yes. And possibly the next. How about this generation? Do you like glass? Yes, I love glass. <laughs> Will this generation be joining you in the studio? Um, so I guess my grandkids would be, well, I'm first, second, third, fourth. So they would be the fifth generation. Um, definitely. I think that they're doing pretty good on carving these pumpkins. Um, and they're, they're in the studio and they play with the glass here and there and they do really good. So I don't have any doubt whatsoever. We will have a fifth generation. Okay. So, yeah, it, it's fun. It's really great to to be able to hand that down and, and and keep it going. And it keeps their legacy going. Um, tonight I'm going to pick up some glass from someone had contacted me that their father was a glass artist and he would recently passed away. So um, we are going to pick up some of his pieces. Those pieces will be in our studio. So his work can still continue to be admired and appreciated and loved. And um, I'm going to be buying some of his glass and I will love that glass as much as he loved it. <laughs> so, you know, it, it's something that is passed down and lots of families do that. And I know it's not a traditional art, you know, for Native American, but it's my family's art, and we love to share our culture and and stories through it. So that's that's how it works for us. And you do a beautiful job of it too, Brandy. I mean, your pieces are gorgeous, and you're passing on those traditions to everybody. Trying. <laughs> Teaching yeah, new generations, have, new people. We have a lot of students, and they all just keep coming back, and I'm so thankful. And you know, and just they contact, and 
you know, I had another one. She went somewhere and saw some things on sale and she contacted me. And, you know, those things help because I really want to make anyone that wants to try stained glass, I, I want them to have that opportunity. And I don't want it to be a rich man's craft or art. You know, uh, anyone should have the opportunity to try anything that they want to. And stained glass is very good therapy. I have a lot of kids. I have a house full of teenagers. I've got life and glass. Breaking glass helps, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It keeps me pretty settled and, you know, I'm an adult that has a hard time staying still and I just go, 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 go. But when I'm working on my glass, I don't have that anxiety. I don't have all those. It just calms me. So I knew it did it for me. I didn't realize it would do that for so many other people. So it's been very enlightening and, and nice to know that it helps other people too. So if anyone has a group that they want to get together I think we're planning an, a project for like a, it's not women in recovery, but it's um, a group that's similar to that. And I know that we're working with them. Um, I know that we have Creeks, uh, Creek Nation. They have an elderly group that was going to come right before when COVID hit. Um, I look forward to replanning when they can to do their group and their class. And we had, um, man, this past week, We've had so many people just come through the studio one by one. And, you know, from we had a large Cherokee group of Cherokee women, and that was a lot of fun. And it's just so empowering to have all these other artists and and everyone that comes through and just to know that they think of you and they're supportive to have this. Gives you the warm fuzzies, doesn't it? It does. It's nice. This has been a good week. It, you know, when you worry and worry and then things turn around, you know, it's a reminder that you have support and there's people out there cheering you on and, and don't give up and keep trying and, and keep yourself around those positive people that want to see you do well. And if you have it, give it and share it and love it and just hug it. <laughs> that, well, that's sort of the native way, isn't it? I've been telling people. So, you know, <laughs> and like protect yourself, protect your friends. So, we yeah. all just keep trying and keep getting better and keep uh, moving forward. Oh, good, good. Well, Brandy, I'm so glad you could join us today. And I hope you have fun going to get that stained glass that you're going after. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And we will see you again tomorrow. So, does the little one know how to say bye in Cherokee? Uh, <laughs> bye. All right, Wado. You say Wado? Yes, I say Wado. Say Othio. Wado. No, those are theirs. We're working on it. <laughs> okay. Well, we will see you tomorrow. And if you're tuning in we will have that schedule up of the artists later on on the Tulsa Native American Day virtual market page so or in the okay. event so you can tune in for some of your favorite artists all your favorite artists will be streaming all day off and on from 9 a.m. no excuse me from 10 a.m. till about 5 p.m. well we might show up at 9 too so um so thank you Again, Brandy. And Tiffany's here. How are you, Tiffany? There, I had to unmute. Almost forgot. I'm good. How are you? Good, good. So, Tiffany, tell, for the people who are tuning in, tell us who you are, what you make, what tribes or tribe you represent. Um, my name is Tiffany Ryder. Um, my business is Cherokee Ridge Jewelry Designs. I make uh, jewelry, obviously, uh, mainly sterling silver and uh, copper. I do some brass and some leather. Um, uh, Cherokee, dust Cherokee Ridge. And um, I guess that kind of sums it up. I have, uh, today I don't have anything basically new. Tomorrow I will have all new designs to present to everybody. 
So today we'll be So you have all new designs? Tomorrow I will be debuting new pieces. So today, meh, okay. Steph, some people might not have seen some of the pieces, but tomorrow everything will be new. Oh, yay. Can't wait yeah. to see the, all the new pieces. And hopefully tomorrow, um, between now and tomorrow, I don't know what happened. I remember I told you I was having problems with this new platform because I had it pegged with the other one that we were using and then we switched. And then my cord, I guess, decided it didn't want to work. So I'm going to have to kind of work with things today and tomorrow. Hopefully I'll get my cord to work with me. So um, today I have... Uh, my arrowhead pendant. Oh, my glare is not working with me. My lighting in the studio is like, cause it's so bright so I can work. It doesn't like it when I try and show my jewelry. Okay. Yeah, it, it does make it hard. Yeah, now is that is, copper? A this copper is sterling. Arrow? Yeah, sterling, so okay. If it had like I had planned, it would show nicely, but it doesn't like it the way this is. Um, yeah, this is an arrowhead pendant. Let's see if I can get it a little closer where it's not. No, it's not going to like it again. There we go. That's a little better. Other new arrowhead pendant. Uh, and um, this is on my website. So you can actually, it's on Facebook and on my website. So you can see this and um, you can switch out the length if you decide you want. This is on a 16 inch. There we go. So you can see kind of how big it is. And this is yes. a 16 inch choker. And you can request a longer choker or a thicker choker if you're a man. Because this is mm -hmm. a, a three millimeter choker. You can get a five millimeter choker, which is a thicker one. And um, so, uh, so just request you know, if you want a longer one or whatever. Right. Yeah. And if you get yeah, the longer, a lot of people don't necessarily, yeah. well, don't know what they like different lengths. Yeah. I'm not wearing, and plus I got my, I put my hair over it. I have scars on my neck from my surgery. So it looks like I took a yo-yo to a knife fight. So my neck's all scarred up. So I can't model my own jewelry. Um, it doesn't look nice. And then I have, this is a little ensemble. These are lapis lazuli earrings. Beautiful. Yeah, and you can't tell here, but again, on the, the photos on the website and on Facebook and on Instagram as well, you can see the hammer texture. And here is, let's straighten it up here. Straighten up, buddy. Here is the matching pendant that goes with it. Let's see if it wants to focus. Focus, focus, buddy. Oh. Uh, come on that's in. That's pretty. Yeah, and I, I clean this up, but then the light shows like all the lint. Once I, I did the little rolly thing on it, but now all the lint wants to show. And then let's see if we try it on this instead. This does any better. We're at a different angle here. There we go. Bring it up just a little bit. Yeah. Let's see. You might, if you try tilting it. There we go. There we go. So that, that tell, tell me about those feathers. These are hand, they're caught one, the main one and this, come on. There we go. Down, down, back. Bright light, bright light. All right, come on, buddy. Mm. I can't, I had it a minute ago. Mm. There, <laughs> far away. There we go, but it's far away. Yeah, that works. Okay, so we have um, sterling silver and two copper. They're hand hammered and you can't really tell because we're so far away, but um, they have hand hammered texture on them. And even the little tube setting, I even made that myself as well, that they're hanging on. Turn it. Very right. nice. Yeah. And then there are matching earrings. Let's see. Somebody said to try tilting down. That might help the. 
the lighting. Hang. Well, they hang, so gravity works against us there. But so we've got the copper earrings here. Let's see if I hold them. So they. Okay, we've got copper earrings that match. And then we have sterling silver as well. Oh, those are nice. Beautiful. And um, we have sterling silver pendant as well. How much would things like that run, Tiffany? Okay, the, uh, the three feathers are $75. And again, you wow. can, yeah, you can request because um, they're smaller. They're substantially smaller than this than the sterling. But that's you, a wonderful price. Yeah, I try to be fair with my pricing, and um, I don't want to be greedy, but I don't want to lose money also. And um, no, right, because you're an artist, but you want to make the yeah. living being an artist. I yeah, I don't want to be a starving artist. And, exactly. Um, I was going to say that, but <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> so the, the the copper ones, the three feathers are seventy five dollars, and then the sterling feathers, the sterling, the pendant, the single pendant comes in small and large, and the um, the large one is eighty dollars, and then the copper earrings are forty five. Are those on your website, Tiffany? Um, everything I'm showing today are all on my website. Okay. They're on, so, they're on Facebook and my website. I'm looking for it to put the link in there. Okay. So it looks like you have a sterling silver arrowhead pendant choker. Yeah, that's so. 68. Wait, 62. Sorry. 62, right. Yeah, 62. And then. Yeah, that's this. I'll just put the link to your shop in the comments again for everybody who's watching Very nice. She's got so many all things um so sharon I, you just asked how can you purchase um and i have leather i just put the link to her shop in the comments for you cherokee ridge jewelry shop or jewelry dot com jewelry dot com or on facebook at cherokee ridge jewelry designs I do these as well. These are leather and they come. Oh, we're getting some interference. Oh, okay. And they, they have two snaps on them so you can adjust it for like bigger wrists, smaller wrists. Can you see them now? Am I here still? Um, are you still there? I'm here. I mean, I, I hear you fine. Tiffany, I think we're going to come back to you. Um, I don't know if the difficulty is on my end or your end, but we will try coming back to you. Okay. Okay. So can you hold on tight there? Certainly. Okay. I am going to bring up, um, Next, we have a beautiful bead worker. She is in Oklahoma, and let me bring her up next for you. We're bringing Jan, and Jan, how are you today? I'm doing awesome. How are you? Good, good, good. So I need to change this to you, Jan. Where are you? Okay, we'll just take it off the screen for now. Um, can't find your banner for a minute. Juggling too many things. So, Jan, <laughs> I'm going to turn this screen over to you. Okay. I don't need to be on the screen. And, whoops, I did that backwards, didn't I? Hello. There, there we go. I, I, <laughs> technology is great when you work it right. So again, so Jan, tell us a little bit about what you do and where you are and 
what tribe you're from. Okay. My name is Jan Tharp. I'm Cherokee. Uh, I live in Chelsea, Oklahoma. have been here for about seven years. Uh, I do a bead weaving when it comes to beads. I just pretty much whatever I can bead on, I probably pretty much do it. Uh, I've been beading probably about 30 years. And what got me started is I picked up a piece of, I call it material, because that's almost what it felt like was material that uh, it was a peyote stitch. And when it just felt, it just felt so soft to me anyway. And I about determined I was going to learn how to do it. And so I did learn how to do it. And I am one of those that am self-taught because, uh, you know, the technology we have today, you can, you know, Google anything and say, you know, uh, find something. But back then when I first started, it was pretty much, you know, uh, look through books and magazines and maybe go to the library or something. But, uh, but I absolutely love doing beading. Like Brandy was talking about hers being a, her calming and everything. This is my calming. I call it my tranquilizer pill also where I take my beads and I just sit down and I, I, I work with my beads. Uh, about nine years ago, I uh, learned how to do Cherokee beadwork uh, through uh, Cherokee, our Cherokee uh, National Treasure, Martha Berry. And uh, this is the first piece that I made, which you'll see here on the, my banner here, uh, which I absolutely love. This is one of my favorite pieces. And I still do it. I uh, bead just about anything. Uh, my most recent piece right here. Let me find out which way I need to go here. But this one here I call Sagoni Gay. This is, means blue, a Cherokee. Uh, I also do beading like wire hoop earrings. Just whatever I can get a bead on, that's what I do. Beautiful. And uh, porcupine quills, I've got to, you know, sew quite a few of these here. Earrings. Now, Jan, do you have a website? Yes, it's uh, Janice Gems. It's J A Y N A S J E M S dot com. Uh, you can also find me on Facebook if need be. Um, and right now I'm running a special that through uh, Tuesday, uh, regardless if you order off the web or if you have to say, hey, I see those. Can I have them in a different color? I can do that. I still will honor the 10 percent off is what I'm doing right now. Uh, all you have to do is uh, type in your coupon of uh, Tulsa Native and you will get a 10 percent off uh, your entire purchase, if you would like. So even if you wanted that beautiful bag, 10 percent off, 10 percent off. Now, what are your price ranges on your things, Jan? Well, this here is my most expensive piece right now, and it's three hundred dollars because it's uh, it's it's a uh, it's wool glass beads uh, beaded on wool, and it's calico cotton underneath, uh, satin ribbon, and it's all hand stitched together. I don't machine no machine touches my purses. I take care of everything, every stitch you see in here. I put in there with my own hands. So this one here is my most expensive piece right now at $300. So you would get $30 off. Uh, I have moccasins, little infant moccasins. Beautiful. Those there are 75. So 10% you, uh, you get what? 750 off. And uh, different earrings, key rings. I got corn bead necklaces, Cherokees, oh. call them, Cherokees call them corn beads because they're grown. You grow these beads and they grow on stalks that looks like corn. Oh, gotcha. So that's why they call them corn beads because they grow on stock that look, looks like corn. Um, but my price ranges, uh, these earrings are $20. So my prices are $20 on up. I also um, make these here bracelets. These here go like crazy. I can't keep these on hand. These go like crazy. This particular one has this. Uh, hopefully I can get it in there to. It's yeah, it's coming up. There we go. Is that a buffalo? Yeah. 
and it's got beads and I have a charm that's even a buffalo on there. Oh, wow. So, and I make these in different sizes, different colors. This particular one is seven inches, which, which is, fits my wrist. And uh, these sell for $25 here. Oh, that's also, very good price. Yeah. Um, I also, not only do I have this in Buffalo Head, I've also got the Indian Head buttons too. I just don't have one on me right now. <laughs> But they can find that on your website, right? Yes. I got to post these on. I just got them done today, so I've got to get them pictured and uh, post on the uh, website. Well, that's wonderful. Beautiful, beautiful work, Jan. Thank you. So, um, you brought you on a little early. Did you have anything else? That, that That's the joy of everything being live. Um, <laughs> uh, okay. Like I said, the only, uh, you know, ink pens, key rings. Uh, this here is a different key ring that I do. Beautiful. Is that a rose? There we yes. Go. Yeah. Kind of. It's just, you know, free pattern, free stitch, free hand, you know, just like this one here. It looks like a rosette. So all that is free stitch. Oh, yeah. I stitch all this all myself. I don't hire nobody to do my stitching. I think uh, it's Sheree has just said she can really feel your connection to your heritage and your art and the way you share about your art. Well, thank you. I oh, know. I appreciate that. I'm also so, trying to think about doing something else. I'm, I was hoping to get it done and uh, do something new for tomorrow. I'm, I'm still working on it, so I don't want to... <laughs> Well, I hope you do. Can you show us a sneak peek today? Well, it's going to be made something like this. Wow. It's like this. Oh, okay. So you're giving us some clues. Yes. So I can't, I'm looking forward to seeing that. So you'll be joining us again tomorrow. Yes. And um, for those of you who are joining us live right now, this is Lisa and you are watching the Tulsa Native American Day Virtual Market. We're here with Jan Tharp of Janice. Is it Janice's Gems? Janice Gems. Mm -hmm. Janice Gems. Uh -huh. And um, she is a Cherokee leader from Oklahoma. She'll be back with us tomorrow and she's working on a special project. So we can't wait to see what that's going to be. A lot of our other artists will be back with us tomorrow as well. And we'll be streaming all day tomorrow so tune in for that schedule and you'll see that you can join us at any time um i do want to thank you jan for joining us thank you for having me you're welcome we'll see you tomorrow hang around we might bring you back okay all right i'll be here i did want to let everybody know about the t-shirt the native tulsa native american day t-shirt um that you can order and I'm going to get that link for you all here in the comments. There's a beautiful, I don't have it with me today, I'm sorry, but the Tulsa Native American Day t shirt, we will add that link to the comments later on. And um, be sure to order yours, and we'll have one to show tomorrow, I think, maybe. So um, if you've got one, Share it in the comments. If you've got something, share it in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. Next, let's bring Tiffany back real quick for a few minutes. She had a few more things to show us. Tiffany. Am I all here? I think so. Okay. <laughs> oh, I was just showing the last um, couple of things. I also work in leather. So I had these two crooked. There we go. Focus. Yeah, I think it what worked for I don't know if it worked on yours, but it would go um, slow, creep up on it. Go go slow and kind of hold wait for a second and the camera might focus. There it goes. Yeah. Beautiful. Focus on the lapis one. There we go. Come on. Now you have lapis and what's the other one? Okay, the other one is banded onyx. 
It doesn't want to focus on the lapis. Let's see. Let me turn it. It really like the camera really likes the banded onyx. Yeah, it does. I think of let's let's go this way. See if it'll decide it likes the lapis. It just doesn't like the lapis. <laughs> I like lapis. I do so. too. It's one of my favorites. Uh no. Like that one. There we go. Almost. Oh, yep. Yeah. Nope, it did it. Yeah, I don't know. It doesn't like that one for some reason. <laughs> Now, something people may not realize about you, Tiffany, is that you actually go and collect your own stones from time to time, don't you? I do. I do my own mining. Um, I'm a lapidary, which means I take, when I go out mining, I find, I have a, a miner in geology, which helps me know what, oh, wow. yeah, what rough material looks like because it doesn't look anything like finished stone it looks like just rocks a lot of people might not know that they're looking at actually beautiful stones because they just look like big rocks so i know where to look and where to dig a lot of times you have to dig i've i've actually dug four feet down into the ground to find specific things before so um you find the big stones and then i slab them i have like a huge i'm pointing over to my lapidary area I have a huge saw that has a blade about that big around and you just slap it big. into small pieces. And then once you do that, then you cut it and then you grind down the stones. So I do that, but it's very time consuming. So I have to chisel out part of my time to that. And then once I do that, then I make jewelry with it. So instead of farm to table, you're like field to ring. <laughs> more like desert desert to, yeah my most of my stones i get are from the desert or the mountains for the most part yeah that is wonderful wonderful so if you're just joining us this is tiffany with cherokee ridge jewelry and she i'm going to tell you all if she she hasn't yet today and she recently has been recognized as um now at the Last Cherokee Art Show, you were a rising star or a, what was uh, it? You got an award for something. I did. Uh, let me think hard. What was it? Emerging artist. Emerging artist. Okay. Yes. So, yes, yeah, so she won the award for emerging artist. And I think you have that piece for sale, don't you? I haven't got it back yet. <gasps> it's like probably in transit right now because they held it for, you know, a certain amount of time in the museum. And they actually have both of well, they have three of my pieces right now. So I don't have them. <laughs> so if I ever get them back, they'll be for sale, but I still don't have them. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah, they still have mine from the Trail of Tears show. The April show. Yeah. Well, we we need to send someone to go pick those up for you. <laughs> well, they said that they, I asked them if they would just hold that piece and send them all back because I, I didn't feel right sending my mom to go pick it up because that didn't seem fair for me to like have her be at risk to go pick it up. Oh, okay. So you're, yeah. for those of you who are looking for the t-shirt orders, the, there's a comment in the feed for in order to order your native American day t-shirts. And if you haven't seen them yet, I am going to, they're awesome. Um, let's see. They are awesome. And they're on our background. Let me see if I can do this. Nope, you can't see it. You can't see it, but um, I'll bring them up later. It's the problem with being live sometimes. You can't always do everything you want to do. But we will have that link, and we will have a live version of it on the screen for you later on. So, um, Chair, Tiffany, do you have anything else coming up or anything special you're working on? or? Um. No, like I said, I have all new designs that I will be debuting tomorrow. And that's so, so exciting. I won't be putting them on any of my sites until right before tomorrow's program. So nobody will be able to see them. So I'll just hit the but yeah, it'll be like a surprise for everybody. Not like everybody's like waiting with bated breath, but you never know. So anyway, um, I'll, I'll have them up right before we go on. So they'll be available as I show Perfect. Them. Yeah. Well, that is going to be great. 
Yeah. So. so I've been working on them for a bit. I bet. How long does it typically take you to work on something? Well, when I have a new design, um, I normally, this is one of the things that I always do when I come up with a new design, I wear it to make sure it's comfortable because I'm not going to sell jewelry that's not comfortable. One of my favorite instructors always told me jewelry should not make you bleed. So <laughs> it makes me bleed, but it doesn't make you bleed. So, <laughs> so I always, when I, when I do a new piece, I always wear it for a day or so just to make sure it's comfortable. So I know if I need to tweak it somewhere and then I get everything done and then it's ready to go. So it takes a while because, you know, you have to cycle through wearing pieces and doing any adjustments or whatever. Right. So you make a prototype and you might make some adjustments or changes mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Just like any other product design, I guess. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So how did you get started in jewelry design? Um, through mining. I was, I was doing my pieces or, you know, my uh, mining and selling my finished I was selling rough and finished stones to jewelers and they were making money off of my stuff. And I was like, Hey, you know, they're making money. Maybe I should give it a shot. And so I took a, a class and then I took another class and then it just kept going and I ended up, I ended up taking four years of jewelry classes. And, um, and then I ended up actually teaching jewelry and, and then I started my own business and here I am now. Well, we're glad you are. I mean, you obviously have a talent for what you do. And I'm glad you're here to share it with everybody. Me too. And, and if like anybody wants metal. So um, we need to put your links again because you had those beautiful necklaces earlier. If you're just tuning in now, you need to go back and look at those and also check her um, check the links. I'm on Instagram, I'm on Facebook, and I have my website. Is so, it Cherokee Ridge Jewelry? Um, is the my, website? my website is Cherokee Ridge Jewelry .com. My Instagram and Facebook are Cherokee Ridge Jewelry Designs. Okay. So they can find you there. Mm -hmm. And um, I've gone ahead and put the links to your website in the comments. And for those of you who are joining us, you can also join us on um, YouTube if you choose to take us along with you if you can't watch Facebook. But um, it's gorgeous work, gorgeous work, Tiffany. We're so happy you joined us today. Well, thanks for having me. I'm glad you did. I'm glad you invited me. It's always fun having you along. Okay, so it looks like next we are going to bring up um, another artist. So. How are you doing, Cynthia? You're muted. You need to unmute, Cynthia. I didn't think I was till 1.30. I'm still getting ready, but I'll wing it. <laughs> <laughs> flexibility, flexibility. Okay. Well, I could probably add your other camera, other device to the stream. so. What's what? We could probably add your other, if you have another device, we can probably add that to the stream so they can see oh, wow. your uh, view. You didn't do that today, okay. No, but I have my, uh, let's see, well, I was gonna, oh, I was working on uploading a picture and I don't, I haven't figured out how to screen share yet. Oh wait, there's my ring light and my glasses. Hang on, let me move that. <laughs> like that. Okay, so, okay, so here we go. Hello everybody. Um, I'm Cynthia Masterson. Um, I was born in Oklahoma. I'm a member of the Comanche Nation of Oklahoma. I grew up in Tulsa, uh, but now I live in Seattle, Washington, and that's where I'm talking to you today uh, from my studio here. And my neighbor's building a fence, so Actually, I don't think I need these. I don't think I need my headphones. Uh, my neighbor's building a fence. So if you hear a little um, whacking, that's what's going on. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I do bead work. Let's see, I was trying to get my shot in. So my there, there's my shot. Um, 
And yeah, there's some stuff behind me on both sides. Um, but yeah, I wonder, let me see. I'm going to just talk and maybe try to upload this picture to Go ahead. the site. But, um, but yeah, hi, everybody, again. <laughs> 30 minutes early so i'm a little oh well that's okay we so a little shift of things well yeah, that's so cool. mary beth thought that, thought that was a power drum in the background that's why i ask people to show up a little early so that if something <laughs> happens we can shift and be but, uh so yeah so i mostly do bead work um in the style of southern plains and my comanche tribe and so i have a few things back here I'm gonna to try to switch my camera to, I have a webcam on my phone. So let's see if this works to sure. do. Okay, so Epic Cam and then, oh, that way. All right, yeah, see, there's my neighbor over there building his fence. <laughs> so here's what I have today on offer. I have this picture, I'll just um, upload it to, upload it, do something. Somehow I'll get it on one of the sites. Um, but kind of here's the style I'm doing is this three drop gourd. And so here I have it on a couple of pens and pencils for sale. Um, last time I did this, it worked okay where I had a big board and people just did numbers and I can do PayPal or Venmo, but I also have some things on Etsy. Um, but these were super fun. I just did these a couple of days ago. Um, so these are my, calling these my pumpkin spice earrings, because I don't usually do anything with orange, but I was just feeling the fall spirit. So I did these pumpkin spice earrings. Oh, not an OSU fan? <laughs> I'm not an OSU fan. <laughs> I guess I went to University of Washington, so I really kind of am more of a husky, I guess, but Oh. Um, if you are a Sooner, look at this sweet little set. Got some uh, red earrings. I made those yesterday while watching the game, those earrings right there. Uh, but then here's, I did these caramel macchiato in brown. I don't usually do a lot in gold, um, but I really dipped into one of my treasures. These are some little crystals uh, that I picked up on a trip. I went to the Czech Republic to go see where some of these beads come from. All of these beads are Czech glass. Um, there's sometimes there's a tiny exception. I don't think there's any exceptions on these. Um, but um, but yeah, I don't remember where I got them and I don't know if I'll be able to find them again. So like to use those is kind of really special. Um, but I'll show you out in my studio. So here's some sure. of the stuff that I've made. This is one of the first things I made kind of in that coffee theme. Um, you know, Comanches and Kiowas, we gourd dance. And I made this, um, see if I can get that, can move that out of the way. I made that uh, out of Starbucks. <laughs> and there's, it's, oh. filled, it's, filled with, it's filled with coffee beans. And so I really did a lot of looking to match the um, beads to kind of evoke coffee and I love it. That's one of the very first things I made. Um, but then I also just put beads on things. This is a um, butter churner. And that was a whole um, exhibition yesterday. Yesterday, last year. <laughs> and um, it, Cynthia, how much is that piece? Which one? Oh, I going to go these are for sale. These are just oh, they're not for sale. Sale. But talk to me if you have a piece. And actually, I have another one of these butter turners. This is such a funny story. Here, I'm going to go back to my switch my camera because my hand is getting tired. Um, there we go. So that butter turner is a really funny story. I went to a traditional plant gathering um, here at Daybreak Star. It's the cultural center here for the urban Indians. And they had a free box and that um, that butter churner was in the free box. And so I grabbed it out of there and it sat with us all day while we talked about our stories and I decided to beat it. And then they actually gave me a couple of more um, Amazon donates uh, items to their uh, programs there. And so I actually have, if you really want your own beaded butter churner, if that's the item you were talking about, um, 
I could do one for you. So just get in contact with me if you want to be in touch with me. Uh, my website is the best way to find everything. It's www.blue.beadwork.com. That's blue dot D-O-T spelled out. I didn't think that through when I named my website. Um, so if you go to blue.beadwork.com, that'll link you to my Etsy site. Some of this stuff is on my Etsy site. Some of it isn't. It will all be eventually, um, unless you buy it today. <laughs> but um, so you can link to my Etsy site. You can link to my YouTube channel. So I do lessons um, on this style of beadwork. And so you can watch some lessons there. Um, I guess a little shout out to Riverside Indian School. If you are a student at Riverside Indian School or know somebody there or have a um, youth in school there, they reached out to me about teaching um, uh, beadwork. So um, I do it online. It's kind of hard, but I can do it. I have this funky camera holder thing so I can use my camera like I was doing and like point it down at what I'm doing. Um, but um, that's how I learned to be was off a of video. So um, guy in Oklahoma there made those how to bead native style videos. And um, he actually went to my church and gave me those videos and I never watched him for like a year. And then I, um, for, for more than a year, cause then I moved to Seattle take my glasses off that um, glare is bugging me. So moved to Seattle and then I had lost the videos and I asked the library here when I was going to school at University of Washington to, to do the video, buy the videos. Then I checked them out from the library and watched them on VHS. If you remember those days. How yes. <laughs> and so I had to watch that video like, you know, and you rewind, it's not like today when you can just put things on a loop and, um, so yeah, I really did get a lot of help from that. And Powwow Bum 49 on powwows.com message board. Whoever that is, I don't know who Powwow Bum 49 is or where he is today, but he was really helpful to me <laughs> back in the day. You know, this was before Facebook and all of that. So so yeah, I don't know. So how long have you been doing this? Let's see, like I went to, let's see, let's see. I know this answer, 2003. It was about 2003 when I started teaching myself. Um, when I was little, my mom uh, worked at the Indian Ed programs in Oklahoma City and she attempted beading and I played with beads when I was very little, but she never really kept it going. Um, and I still have a lot of those supplies, like kind of my heirloom beads, and every now and then I can do this for a little project or something. Yeah, so since 2003, however long that is. But um, but yeah, I don't know. Any other questions coming up? I don't see any in the comments right now, but I do want to let everybody know that that board behind you has oh, things yes. that are for sale with prices. So why don't you show yeah. those? I think that's an ingenious setup, by the way, where people can Thank see. You. So I live here in Seattle and we have this thing called Buy Nothing. It's actually a national group. I think there is one in Tulsa. Um, but people will say like, hey, like I don't want this thing to get in my driveway. And that's how I got this board. It's so awesome. But um, OK, so let me switch back to my camera. And then let's see, which one is that? Oh yeah, and what I'm wearing too, that's for sale too. Um, I love these um, silver twisted, silver lined twisted bugle beads. They're glass, mm. I just love them. And you know what? I, these are so hard to find. I only bought one Hank because I thought, oh, maybe I'll do something with them and I did another pair, which I wanted to wear those today, but they're long. They're like this long. And I used like half the hank for that. And those are mine now. Nobody can have those. But I'll find them again someday, even if I have to go back to Czech Republic. Find them. Okay. So now, oh, there, here's my, look, here's all my messy. Uh, here's where the sausage is made with all of this messy stuff. <laughs> but um, so here is, I did have a better light. 
Um, I don't know what people want to see. Like these are really popular. These little medicine holders, I think. Um, I'm going to take my phone out of, hang on just a second. Um, oops. All right. I'm going to put this in my holder so I don't have to hold my phone. All right. I think you can still see me, right? Yes. Okay. So this is a little medicine holder. Let me get some light on there. Um, it's, there's something in there. I don't know what it is. Let's see. <laughs> Sometimes I put stuff in there to take pictures. Oh, it's a stack of dimes. So yeah, it holds that many dimes. <laughs> but it's also, it's just great for your pills. Um, this is one, this is one of the first ones I made. Um, this was for my husband and I actually need to repair it. So he had his work keys on here and he used it every day for years and it held up pretty well. Um, but you know, these beads are glass and sometimes they just might get a sharp edge and beadwork doesn't last forever. Um, so, you know, that's the trying to focus. There we go. Focus on that. So on his, sometimes I do this. I put, that's my logo for blue dot beadwork. Um, I put that on a little sticker and I put that under there. I oh, did, that's pretty. I just did one of these custom um, and the picture I got, I didn't notice till after I mailed it. Um, she wanted 49ers colors. So I did this in 49ers colors for her and I put the little 49ers on the bottom. It was pretty cute. Um, and then like my snowflakes, I kind of do that little, do a little logo and with the snowflakes, uh, oh, that goes out of focus. There we go. So, um, so yeah, these little snowflakes are $20 or I'll do three for 50. Um, they're super popular last year. I really only started making these for the first time last year. Um, but before that, for the past couple years, I would have parties and we make these snowflakes. So when I went on that trip to Czech Republic, th there's a little wire frame under here. And I brought some of those back from that trip and started making the snowflakes. And then I don't even know how I got started. I think a friend just said, let's have a party. And then she paid me. And then um, the Snoqualmie tribe has been great for their elders program, bringing me in. Um, the Burke Museum here, also really nice to bring me in for their employee um, holiday party. And then just a lot of friends who just have me over and we uh, make snowflakes. So that's been really fun, I guess. I guess that's not happening this year to have a snowflake party. But I um, no. have to send everybody kit. You have to make kits then. Yes. Oh my gosh. Speaking of kits, you know what? I didn't think about that. Let me grab this really quick. Hang on just a second. So we've got a question while you're doing that. There's a question from Facebook. They want to know if your little pill holders can hold nitroglycerin nitroglycerin for heart oh, patients. My gosh, you know, that's a good question. Um, I have done nitroglycerin for family members, like the special little necklace one that's tiny. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what, how big that is. So this is the stack of dimes that was in there. And let me see, where's my um, thingy. But yeah, I have done nitroglycerin and I would do that on special requests. There's actually more room in there than there are these dimes. Let's see, what do I have to measure the depth? Okay, so let's see, this is about that deep and then measure that. I'm endlessly measuring things. So let's put that on inches. Okay, so that is, about it's about an inch and a tenth inch and one tenth deep so if you measure that little nitroglycerin thing and if it's about an inch and a tenth deep um, and just message me i can find one and measure it um and see if it'll fit or if you want me to just do a do a um custom one you know i can find one of those i think i just got them we have here we have bartels 
Uh, but let's see. But here are these pins. Let's see. Here's my calendar. And say happy. This is a pen. Um, uh, I think this is a 0.7 ballpoint black. Happy ending day. So here in Seattle, we call it Indigenous Peoples Day. I think down in Lawton too, they're doing Indigenous Peoples Day. This one here is a pencil. Also, I think 0.7. And, uh, and how much would those cost? These are 95. 95. I know we, you had that up on the board earlier, but. Yeah, and I'll post, after I get off on my session, I'll post it to the um, festival. Comments? Yeah. Okay, and, and post it, um, go ahead and post it, and we will share all that information for you later on. Yeah. So anyway, so those are just two. These are uh, really stainless steel um, pen. And you can replace, you can get the replacement at any of the big box um, offices. So that would make a pen and pencil set would make a wonderful Christmas gift, um, graduation yeah. gifts. There are people who graduate in December. Yeah. Um, so I don't have a ton of these right now, but again, if you want one, I'll just whip some out. I've got a lot of pen blanks to do. Um, but let's see, let me switch back to my board. There's my ceiling. There's my board if anybody wants to look at that. Um, so yeah, these, the necklace I'm wearing, these I have, where, I don't even know where I found these beads. Um, they again, they're Czech glass. Here, I'll just show you the one I'm wearing. Um, they're check glass. Oh, on, on my monitor, they look very green. I guess they're about, well, they just look a little brighter. It's just kind of like a turquoisey color, but they're glass. Um, let's see if you can. I thought that was turquoise earlier. I know, I know. And that's one of the reasons that I just love, love, love check glass. It is so beautiful the tradition of glass making they have there. And when I say Czech glass, I mean Czech Republic. And so now they're actually calling, they're renaming their country Chesnia, um, just to sound a little hipper, I guess. Um, but Czech Republic over in Europe um, has this huge tradition of glass making. And um, the beads that come out of there just have their own unique qualities. I know a lot of people um, for their style of beadwork, for a lot of flat work or loom work, some of the Japanese beads are a little more preferred these days. Um, but back in the day when we first got beads, you know, this was all we had to choose from uh, when those traders came in um, with their beads. And so, um, so I just kind of stick with that. They, they do just have their own unique quality, especially for the um, the bead weaving I do. It's just a, if you do it with Japanese beads, the Japanese beads are so uniform and even and perfectly shaped. It just looks weird if everything is so perfect. Um, for this style, it looks weird. For other styles, it looks great. Um, but for this style, I just love these. Um, these are size 11s. I don't know if you know much about the sizes, but um, 11s are kind of pretty respectable to use. 13 is, you know, if you really want to impress somebody and 15s, oh my gosh. Um, and they're just the higher the number, the smaller the bead. So um, again, if you're interested in learning some of that stuff, my website, um, I have some little videos where I talk about okay. that. Yeah, that will be great. So go ahead and I'm going to let you sign off for now. Um, okay. Go ahead and add all those comments to the. Yeah, to I'll, the I'll upload, go to my website, come find me, ask questions. I'll do a nitroglycerin for you. But um, but yeah, thanks for having me. This was great. I guess I'll be back tomorrow and see you then. We'll see you tomorrow, Cynthia. Oh, we'll I'll be forward to it. We'll be ready tomorrow. <laughs> but thanks again for having me. Happy Indigenous Bye -bye. Day. Bye. So next up, I've been there for two hours and my hair looks 
a little messy. Next up, we've got Greg with Cherokee Copper. Greg, hello. How are you? Good. I'm awesome. gonna put you on the screen all by yourself. You got the screen. Woohoo! How do I look, everybody? Do I look handsome? Let Greg know in the comments. <laughs> so, um, Greg, I'm having a hard time hearing you. You might adjust your mic a little bit. The mic is on. It's it's on my iPad. Oh, okay. That might be it. Have have turn off the air. So, welcome everyone. Greg Stice with Cherokee Copper. A little bit about Cherokee Copper. We are, as you know, we're a Cherokee jewelry company, family based here in uh, just Tulsa, Oklahoma, just right south of Tulsa in Liberty Mounds, Oklahoma. It's a family based. Um, I am the uh, the metalsmith. I have a daughter, Mariah. She does mesmo art, that, and she does a lot of the, uh, the beading and the jewelry. Then I also have a son, Joshua. He's sixteen, and he's six four and sixteen, and he makes all the the uh, ladies' earrings. So when you uh, get a piece of uh, purchase our earrings at the online or at any of the trade shows. Uh, Joshua makes us, and Katie, she is uh, my 20-year-old. She's going to UCO, and she also does some of the designing of the, the jewelry pieces. And the the master mind behind uh, Cherokee Copper is my loving wife Lisa. She is um, she does all the social media and the marketing. So, um, and she. Uh, and she's saying I'm frozen. So I don't know. Let me see. Try to move this out of there. Is that is that better? Uh, got to, got no, to... I can hear you fine, but we cannot I, see you. I'm working off the uh, my phone. So, okay, Cheryl said you're looking good though. So keep I, on going. Okay. Good. Thank you, Cheryl. I need all the compliments from ladies I can get. So, all right. Cherokee Copper is um, our main focus is in um, Cherokee tradition. And the copper was one of the uh, main items that we use. So that's what the main metal that we use. We also do German silver and also uh, what's called jewelry brass or poor man's gold. It looks like gold, but um, we do that on a special case basis. So our main metal is uh copper uh a metal smith and um so this time we've got um a special for you we got a box and it's our fifth year anniversary it was interesting that five years ago uh i was working out off of a little three foot by three foot uh dresser and had a couple drawers and that's how we got started and I was doing it to uh, make jewelry and give it away for um, for galas and fundraisings and etc. And something that you may not know or you do know, I'm a deacon in the Catholic Church. And that's one thing that I was giving away uh, in doing that. So five years now has passed and we've come out with our anniversary box. And... Um, and what this is some uh, very unique Greg, in one piece yes lee it's cheryl saying you're frozen now so i'm frozen let's, now. let's i'm going to take you out of the stream for a second and we'll put you right back in so if you're joining us up oh, now he's back okay thank you cheryl we will bring greg back in so we're having some technical difficulties here so there we go so i put my phone toward the window so, because I'm le le uh, working off of that, so we have we have this box. It's on sale right now for fifty five dollars, five years anniversary. But it consists of three main items. It's the uh, Wolfie Feed cuff. It's the classic cuff, and also we I made a brand new necklace 
And I'm going to let Lisa tell you its name and a little bit story about how the name comes about. Okay. Well, Greg, can you show us the items while I'm doing that? Yeah. And I'm not for sure I'm going to say this correctly, but oh, he's turning around the camera there. So like Greg said, in addition to being Oklahoma Indian Festival, I'm here with Cherokee Copper and Greg, and it is Cherokee Copper's five-year anniversary coming up this next week. And um, so we're having a little bit of a celebration. And right now we've got this box set. Um, the Wolf You Feed bracelet has been our most popular item to date. Um, so we wanted to share that again. The classic cuff is the very first item Greg ever put online and um, has been a favorite of people's for the last five years. And then Greg designed this new piece just this past week. And if you've seen Cherokee Copper, you know that we did the Eddie Walk collection this year for 2020, which was getting back to Greg's roots and his family's roots in Etiwa, Oklahoma. So we're taking it back a little bit further back to the Cherokee homeland. And this particular necklace is called the, I'm going to say this wrong. I know I'm going to say this wrong. The, um, is named after one of the original, um, one of the, oh, here I go. One of the original, um, villages or capitals of the Cherokee Nation. So let me bring that up. And that would be, and I'm not sure how it's pronounced because people haven't gotten back, the experts haven't gotten back to me on it yet, but it's either the Tennessee or the Tennessee or the Tennessee necklace so we're waiting to hear back from the experts on that and what how exactly that's pronounced but it's it's a beautiful it's upside down greg i think no it's just right okay i don't see the pearl but so that's a beautiful teardrop necklace with a pearl on it and it's named for one of the original capitals of the cherokee nation so um carol is saying she loves your stuff, Greg. I'm going to let you take the screen completely so that right. people can see the beautiful jewelry. So he, here is the the, the new um, the new necklace. As you can tell, it is a copper teardrop. Let me get a focus. A copper teardrop tear with a freshwater pearl and it is on a 22 inch or excuse me 20 inch necklace and you see the back of it uh, it's got a lobster claw uh, on it and it's got our chair key and then we also have um, here's the classic cuff these are always Everyone loves these because these can be stacked in multiples or single. And I make these um, for a, uh, a woman's wrist so that you can adjust them just by taking them and working it with a, like a shape of a D and just squeezing it. And that's how you get that, that D shape. So that's very, they're very lightweight, very comfortable. And we also have the Wolf You Feed Cuff. One thing it's about people, minutes. Greg, one thing people need to know about the necklace is the only way to purchase it right now is in this box set. This box set retails, would normally retail by itself for $90, but this week only it's going to be $55 for the five-year anniversary. So... Time is of the essence, folks. Don't wait around. If anybody is looking for that special gift, start planning for Christmas. This is a special gift for that your loved one. Or it could be uh, a great deal for three people. So this is one item that uh, 
the gift set is a, a great gift for that loved one to do that. So it's on our website for $55, valued normally at 90 So that's so, And I'll go ahead and put that link in the comments. And that's CherokeeCopper.com. And um, there'll be other specials coming up this week at CherokeeCopper.com with all of our favorite, all the favorites over the last five years. So be on the lookout for that. that. Sign up for the email on Cherokee Copper. I urge you to sign up for everybody's emails. These artists really depend on your, just to keep them, their spirits buoyed, a little bit of money in the bank. So sign up for it, emails. Especially and with uh, coming into the fall, this is a way that if you're on our web, uh, sign up to your email, you're going to get advanced notice of our new products. Like like the necklace here. This was created on Thursday night. Also, here's a new bracelet that this is the first time you've seen it. This is a swirl copper bracelet. Let me see if I can get it tight for you. But you can see the swirl of the copper bracelet so that this will be photos and etc will come out in her email so that you can get advanced purchases of this now we can also make it for a small wrist excuse me or a, a men's wrist so this is what the and then we also have the ross the ross is a classic cuff that um, that we make in women's and men's also. This is an everyday um, cluff right here. And to be also with you, here is mine. I've had it on my wrist for about four and a half years. And you see it, it wears great. Um, it has some, uh, the copper has some good arthritic values they say medically um, so copper is a very great um, item to wear for health reasons too so lisa this is what we got as the the show is the gift sh the uh, gift box the three-piece set it's on our website at cherokeecopper.com and also sign up to stay informed of our new stuff and believe me, we got a lot more new things coming out in the near future for this fall that um, I even shocked Lisa with. So we want to say thank you for uh, tuning in. Check us out at CherokeeCopper.com. Sign up for our mail list so that we can constantly give you great information. Lisa, well, here thank you, you, Greg. Really appreciate you showing up today. <laughs> um okay so if you're just joining us thank you for joining us i am lisa with the oklahoma indian festival and you are watching tulsa's native american day virtual market we're so glad you're here uh, we've had a lot of great artists come on already and we've got more to come and we'll be back again tomorrow so be sure to set your notifications we will um, go ahead and share those and post those here in the comments in a little bit so that you can get those notifications for tomorrow. Um, we've got the Tulsa Native American Day t-shirts are available. And I'm going to post that link here so that you can find those. And these were designed by the artist. And you can find those. The link to those in the in the comments below. Um, they are for sale, I believe, until tomorrow. So you want to make sure you get those. And I am. Let's see who is. Uh, we're running a little be. Our schedule is running a little bit different than we originally intended because this is live and people are 
have lives. So let me go ahead and bring, see who, see if our next person is up. Um, Jan, can you come back for a little bit? Okay, so we're gonna bring Jan back. Jan, are you hey. working on that secret project? Yes, I am. <laughs> it's a aqua color. It's gonna have white on it. It's just something I've been been thinking about doing for the last, oh, say, couple of months, and I just ain't done it. And I thought, why not bring it and try to do it now and uh, bring it out for uh, Native American uh, Indigenous Day? So, you know, uh, I've been trying to work on it along with all the other stuff I've been working on. But it's, um, it's based like this, where I do the two needle applique beading work on there. It takes two needles to work it as uh, the way they, uh, the Cherokees would have done it. Uh, and so what I'm doing, though, is I'm doing it on a smaller scale for a bracelet for about two inches wide. And uh, I think it would be really pretty, you know, because I'm going to have one for myself. But uh, it, I'm, uh, Tiffany was talking about size 11 beads. I'm working this in on size 15 beads. And uh, so that way the detail will be a little bit more clear. Because with the 11s are a little bit bigger and you can't get as much of a detail in there. So that's what I'm working on now. I don't know uh, how much time I got here. If I, you want to see how, how, how I work it or. I'm trying to have problems getting get my thread. All righty. Trying to get my threads, my needles threaded here. And then, of course, you have to, with, since you're working with wool, and what uh, the threads I use is just an all-purpose cotton thread uh, like you would for sewing, just regular sewing. And so you're going to have to keep waxing it to keep it from knotting up and everything. And so that's what I'm doing now. So let me get myself threaded up here, and then I'll turn the camera where we can see what we're doing here. I just love having demos. I think this really brings everything to life for um the people who are joining us. Right, right. Let me see if I got this hook, hooked up here. So let me just go ahead and turn this down so that way we can see what we're doing here. Here's my one needle that I've got my th uh, beads on right here. Mm -hmm. This is my second needle that I do the tack down. Some people, uh, those that does in, uh, embroidery will know it as crouching, I think it's if I pronounce it right. Trying to make sure I keep it where y'all can see what I'm doing. <laughs> but these are real small beads. If you'll notice how small they are. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's very small. You know, I have great um, admiration for beaters because, you know, your vision must be wonderful. <laughs> well, I do have to have help every once in a while. And the way I do that. Is these here are my regular glasses, you know, my bifocals. So let me turn my light back on here. Just regular, my distance and reading. And every once in a while, I might need a little help, and I just take a pair of cheap readers, and I put them on like this to where I can look. But it's only just for a short time if, in case I get into a problem. But for the most part, I just use my regular bifocals. Now, I think I got me an, I don't know, maybe not. I thought I had a knot, but I don't. When you got two threads working here, you have to make sure you don't get them tangled up in here. <clears throat> and if you notice the thread that I'm working with, it's the same color as the background. So that way, when you, uh, stitch it you won't see the back uh the threads some people um uh, when we work i normally work with white thread but when we work with this kind of material we, we try to go with the same color as our background so that way it kind of hides the thread so to speak you know and so mm -hmm. that's why you know we do it that way and if you'll notice i'm working uh 
on muslin so that way you know when I, I stitch it I'll take off the excess muslin but then that way the thread won't come through this material here and this is going to be the backing I thought that was going to be the backing yep that's going to be the backing and then, of course, I'm, I'm debating whether I think I might just go ahead, since I'm doing the white, I might do white banding around the edging like you do on the, like I did on my purse. But this here, I think the white would really look pretty on this here. But that, yeah, this is the backing. I'll do the white banding around. And then uh, I've got some, uh, uh, they call it ribbon hooks mm -hmm. that I'll, I'll use it to hook on here on each end. So that way that it'll hold all the pieces together. And then, then of course, this here is six inches, but I'm going to add a two inch extender so that way it'll fit up to an eight inch wrist. And, and then this here is two inches wide here. And of course, I can make them wider, no problem, you know, or make it longer if you want a shorter chain. But I'm, I'm going to work this here for six inches and then add a two inch extender for those that, you know, needs a little bit bigger wrist. Because I've had some customers that does have a big wrist that, you know, I work with. Right. So, right. so that's pretty much how Cherokee bead weaving is worked uh, when you do it. It's just, it's just a two needle applique. And so what I'll do now is I got to get my bead needle out. This is my bead needle. Keep it from, I'll bring it back up here. Um, somebody wants to know what size needle do you use for the 15 size bead? This one here, I believe is a 12. Uh, I try to use the smallest as I possibly can because sometimes you might have to go through the 15s again. So you want to try to make sure, uh, uh, no, it's not. Yeah, I know it's a 12 because it's real small. I don't know if you can see it here. See how small that is? It's got a real yeah. small hole in there. And uh, and so you have to, I find that it's easy if I wax the ends. I just use regular beeswax. You see how, <laughs> how I use that. <laughs> but I just use regular beeswax. Let me raise this up just a little bit so we can see. And I just take it and uh, I just run my thread through it like so. And this, let me tell you. Waxing your thread when you work on this stuff is a big, big, big help because your thread will inevitably get knotted, get tangled. Uh, but if you keep it regularly waxed, you know, after you do a few stitches, wax it again, a few more stitches, it will really be a big help because of uh, uh, wool and cotton kind of fight with this each other a little bit. But then if you do that, it helps out. And now all I'm going to just do is just pick up my. So if you're just joining us, this is Jan. And she is doing a demonstration of a project. She's going to have finished and ready for sale tomorrow here on the Tulsa Native American Day virtual market. She'll be joining us again tomorrow. And um, we can't wait to see what this looks like when it's done. And um, at this point, I want to thank you, Jan. No problem. Gonna, we are going to bring up our next artist. And he does something a little different. John is outside and he makes... He works in wood and we're going to bring him on so you can see what he does. So. John is with us today and hey, he is. How are you doing, John? Good. How are you? Good. So you're outside and if you're in Oklahoma today, you know that wind is just blowing down the plains. That's right. It's a good so, windy day, but it's a good day for our products, so we don't mind it at all. So, demonstration time, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it is. So, okay. um, so tell us uh, who you are. We know you're John. We can see that you are Whirly Gig Creations, but um, tell us a little bit about how you got started and what you make. 
Uh, actually, we got started. Uh, my wife is from uh, Florida, so I was down there visiting, and one of her mom's friends actually uh, makes these uh, whirly gigs for the yards, and we liked them. We got several in our yard, and we decided that we wanted to start trying to make some, and uh, so that's where we're at today, two, de two years later. So, yeah. Well, that's and, good. Uh, yeah. But I can show you uh, some of them, all of our... Uh, what we have currently in in stock we make a wide variety um on our facebook page uh, we like to come up with new ones all the time so if anybody has any suggestions of what they might like to see uh you know just message us on facebook we'd be happy to to see what we can do about uh, making some new ones so but here's just some that we do currently or that we're currently we have in in stock so And your Facebook page is Whirly Gig Creations, is that right? That's right. So it's uh, W H I R L I G I G S uh, Creations at, on Facebook. So, and and I'm going to put that right there. And creations at yahoo.com. But uh, all of our Whirly Gigs are made of a one inch uh, hardwood uh, pine, and they are painted with bare premium paint indoor outdoor paint. And they are sealed uh, with a, a sealer to protect them from the from the weather. So, if you wanted to, you can leave them out year round. Uh, in extreme weather, ice and snow, we do recommend that you would bring them back in. And all of our whirly gigs do come with a uh, one-inch PVC stake to mount in the yard, so uh, you don't have to worry about that. Uh, it's about two and a half foot long. Or if you have your own post uh, that you want to put one in, you can do that as well. Uh, but maybe you know, get a close-up of what have here so, but uh some of the ones that we have like we have the little bear in the in the canoe and we got our of course our bigfoot and then our uh canoe one here we have we have the tp of course the buffalo and then cardinal in the back and then we have the eagle we have our, our black bear here that she's hand painted. And then we do a wide variety of others. We have, uh, you know, Tweety Bird, we have Snoopy in the plane, we have Dachshunds, uh, we have an owl, and of course, October being Breast Cancer Awareness Month, we have the, the pink ribbon for that as well. So, uh, but we. And it looks like you have all the, John, it looks like you have. A lot of these on your Facebook page. Do you have a website? Uh, we don't have a website yet. Uh, we do need okay. to get that started, but just right now we only have the Facebook page. So. Okay. So I, w I just didn't want to forget to put it in the comments if you did. So, but you have great pictures on your Facebook page. So if anybody's looking to buy a Whirly gig, uh, what's the price range on those? Uh, all of our Whirly gigs are thirty dollars, and like I said, they do include the steak. Uh, and we do we don't do shipping because it's hard to. Shipping is kind of expensive, but we will if, if you're willing to pay it. Uh, but we have to ship it separate with the stake because it's two and a half foot long and it doesn't fit in the box with the whirly gig. Uh, we do a lot of shows around. Uh, you can meet, find us there, and we post those on our Facebook page. Or if you, uh, we can also meet in Tulsa area, if you know, or surrounding area as well. So if a customer is interested, we'd be happy to meet up with you somewhere. So. Okay. Yeah. So that's a great way. Yeah. A lot of people are doing delivery or pickup these days anyway, regular businesses. So that's a service uh, as artists we can offer people. Yep. So if you're interested in any of the Whirly gigs, um, go ahead and leave a comment here for John and he can get back to you. And um, if you and he will do local pickup or delivery, he'll meet you. And that's local to the Tulsa area. So. And um, can we get a close-up of a couple of those, John? I think it's sunflower. I'm sorry. No, do you think can we okay. get a close-up of some of those? Yeah. So tell me about a little bit about your process. Do you hand cut things or how do you without giving away all your secrets, but oh no, that's fine. Uh, they're all start with a one by 12 uh, uh like i said hardwood board and then they're you 
know, we uh, got patterns for different ones or we find patterns that we have on the internet or that we want to do. Uh, each one is cut with a scroll saw and a jigsaw. And then they are sanded down and, and then my wife actually paints them because I'm not mastered the painting part of it yet, but I just do the, the assembly of it, the woodwork, and she'll do the painting on it. So, but um, it does take a little time to make each one. Uh, due to being, you know, time painting it and cutting it out and all that. So, uh, but that's about it um, as far as construction of it. So, okay. Well, do you have a favorite design that you do? Or uh, I think my favorite one is probably the Snoopy in the airplane. This one right here. So, yeah, and it's pretty popular as well. Most people like it. So. But as far as the, you know, more towards Native American, I really do like the buffalo uh, living here in, in Oklahoma. So it's one of our favorites too. So. That should have a pair of jeans on the horn. <laughs> What's that? You could update that with a pair of jeans on the horn. Yeah, we need to do that. So <laughs> I saw that. It's a very timely design right now. But okay, so you've got you can find John at Whirly Gig Creations on Facebook. Um, we've posted that link in the comments. And they design sell for about thirty dollars. Is that right, John? Yeah, that's correct. Yes. And um, do you ever do custom designs? Uh, we do. We've done quite a few dogs. Some people wanted us to match their, their pets, and we've done that. We've done a schnauzer. We've done some, uh, I guess, some mutts, I guess. We've done some dogs before, so, yeah, different colors. So, but yeah, uh, if people will send us a, a picture. We try to do the best we can to match, you know, whatever they're, they're asking for. We've done, uh, a lot of people do camping. Uh, we've had several requests for customers. One of the uh, wanted to just do one of their camper and put their name on it so when they're out camping they place it out and you know kind of makes them stand out a little bit more with other campers I guess and their own personal word of gig for their camper so well wonderful thank you will you be joining us tomorrow or uh, yes we will uh -huh. okay well um, stick around and we'll get you scheduled in there so okay yeah. Maybe. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, John. Nice having you with us. All righty. So thank you for joining us all here. We have a few more artists coming up, and we can't wait to share them with you. But I did want to let you know that about the T-shirt orders, you can order your T-shirts. And I'm going to put that link in the comments again. For anybody who wants to get their t-shirt ordered. Um, coming up next, we've got Mesmo Studio. And she's joining us. And how are you today? Honestly, am I muted? You're unmuted, yes. Okay, good. Honestly, I'm a little bit tired and I want to take a nap. <laughs> it is a Sunday afternoon. So, Mariah, why don't you tell us what you do, what tribe you're from, and how you got started? I am from the Cherokee tribe. I, through Mesmo Studios, I do prints and drawings with watercolor, prismacolors, pastels, stuff like this. This is a watercolor design. Or my recent design for October, which is my pumpkin. This is prismacolor. Looks, there we you go. can nice definitely look 3D there. I can definitely see that. It's my newest design added to it. 
and I actually have a t-shirt order form for it, pre-order form, because I haven't, because I have multiple designs out, and I wanted to ask my customers, which design do you prefer? Because it's October right now, and like, do you want the cheesy Halloween shirt, or do you just want the pumpkin shirt right now? And we'll see if we can't get that um, pre-order form for yeah, I'll you. leave it in the comment on the Facebook and on the YouTube after I'm done with the whole video right now. I also have this design, my pine tree. My mountain design. There we now, go. those are de those designs. What do you make? Are you, they in print form? What are they available in? Well, I'm almost done. Let me find my uh, best selling design is behind me. My turtle design. These are all the originals that I actually drew on. I currently am selling them in t shirts note cards and in stickers the note cards are the newest thing right now and in the future stationary sets i have the design set up from or at least the like printout stationary where you can like type it all out have the nice little design be like have the written letters and they'll be all cute i have the t-shirts right here this is my mountain t-shirt Same design on a cotton t-shirt with a gray back, gray t-shirt. Also, uh, for this pre-order t-shirts, all my other designs are on gray t-shirts because I've gotten feedback about how people are sort of afraid of the white t-shirt and getting stains on it. I've never been afraid Probably of white stains are a real like thing. Yeah. And also art stains. Makeup stains. Yes. Because my best selling has always been like the turtle and the turtle's on the white t-shirt. And I like it because, well, colors make the white makes the colors pop, but we're offering it in gray now, at least in the pre-orders. We'll see how that goes. And we have also the tree alongside with a tag that tells you the story and a link with a QR code with a link to it, which also the price for all the t-shirts is $25. Uh, I cannot see the camera. Am I good? A little bit over more. There we go. I like this one especially with the color t-shirt because it makes my ombre look great. I, I made this design with, I, with the story in mind, but also with, I wanted to color a tree with, I made this in spring and I was looking at the colors of all the trees and all the leaves that were going. And I'm like, I want all the colors of all the spring leaves on this tree i just the green makes me happy so tell us the story briefly of the inspiration for that tree oh it's a little story that actually isn't really known because i actually grew up listening to all the cherokee stories through like camp cherokee or going to the like heritage center that's and it's one of the very, one of the few ones I didn't actually get to, like, hear growing up. I actually had to look for it and read for it, read it, and research it during um, my, like, schooling. Because I had to take requirement in Oklahoma at schools is a semester of Native American history where you learn about all the tribes of America. And for the pine tree... The story behind it is there was a sparrow who was injured during the winter, so he couldn't fly all south for the winter. 
So we went to the oak, Brother Oak Tree and asked, may I stay in your, in your boughs for the winter and Oak Tree refused. And so we went to Elm Tree and Elm Tree refused. And then he went to Pine Tree and Pine Tree said, yes, you may stay within my, within my leaves even though they are sharp and prick prickly. And so afterwards when the great grandfather winter came by, came by, he said, all you trees that refused sparrow, which were like oak, um, you will all lose your leaves come winter. But pine and all the other evergreens, you won't lose your leaves. So that's basically the Cherokee story of why the evergreens keep their leaves during winter, which is just so sweet and dear to my heart. Because just as someone who loves myths and fairy tales and how they come to be and how they evolve, it's just the Cherokees creating their own myth of how trees stay green during winter is just so sweet. And so I just had to draw it. And of course, I just love the green colors. And so I just, I love, I love I love this design, and honestly, I wish more people would buy it because it's one of my favorites personally. But then again, people love the turtle, and it's my sister's favorite, so I can see why. Yeah, I think the but turtle I'll... has universal appeal. It's not just strictly a Cherokee. Yeah. And that may be why. Yeah, I spend a lot of time at Camp Cherokee during the summer, so I'm like, so and spending a lot of time with being enriched in the culture. So I'm like, I love the pine tree. <laughs> it's a really Cherokee story for me, especially whenever you go and visit, like not only the Oklahoma reservation in Tahlequah, but the Eastern Cherokee reservation. And you see the actual trees there and you're like, yes, yes, I understand like all of the myths that have traveled from Crocs, the trail of tears and you're just it's all so fascinating and lovely and I <laughs> well we can part see of my certainly, history. yes we can certainly see your passion for what you do and for your art Mariah and we appreciate it's, that it's, it's not necessarily my art it's just I want to draw the stories of my people and it's just even if it is just, well, not necessarily the pumpkin. I have a Three Sisters design in mind, but I'm not going to draw that right now. But I drew a pumpkin on the 1st of October because, honestly, I was in orange and pumpkin mood because it's spooky season. It sounds like, you know, we have another artist who was in a pumpkin spice mood earlier. So definitely, you know. <laughs> yeah, doesn't and I wasn't going to draw a jack-o'-lantern. Jack o' lantern, but I'm like, pumpkin. Yes, I'll draw a pumpkin. It's a gourd. But um, he, before I get distracted by more myths and stories, I'll show the note cards. They do come included with an envelope, and the note cards are three dollars, three dollars each. They're currently being sold on CherokeeCopper.com. Because I don't have my own personal website, but I also sell, but I'm also working under Cherokee Copper to make jewelry. So some of my jewelry is being sold under Cherokee Copper. So here is the turtle note card. They're all packaged up and nice and neatly with the note card, with the envelope inside the note card like this. Bring it over a little bit more center, Mariah. I'm sorry, it's reversed for me. <laughs> but it comes with an envelope. Here's the pine tree. I am working on a Christmas tree design. An actual Christmas tree design for Christmas. And two, but if it does, if you want to order just plain pine tree design 
if you don't want to be Christmassy, you can order the just plain tree design. Because <laughs> I love it anyway. Because nothing says winter more like an evergreen tree bow. And I have stickers! And a random bean stuck in my sticker bag from my last art show. <laughs> I don't have any pumpkin stickers right now because the pumpkin design I literally brand new. Oh gosh, the face. I'm sorry. Concentration based. That's why I don't live stream when I draw because I tend to. But I sell stickers. There are three for six, and it's, oh goodness, two, oh goodness, I forgot, I, I'm horrible at this. We'll put the link in the comments for everybody so they can find it. I'm sorry, <laughs> I have a brain condition. <laughs> I'll share the links, but biggest thing is I have t-shirt pre-order form. So any size you want, any color, if you have any requests for colors, let me know. Like if you want a certain design on a certain color background, please let me know. I'm like newly starting out, like fresh. I've, I started out only a couple months ago. So if you have any design requests, any t-shirt color requests, please head over to Mesmo Art on Facebook. Like and follow the page. Like follow the page, or you can head over to Me at Mesmo Studios on Instagram. Like and follow. Just l let me know any designs you want, because I'm currently. I only have a few designs. I have a lot of free time right now, so. I only have a, one, two commissions and three designs I'm working on in time for one for November, one and two for Christmas. So if you want something, let me know. I will draw it because you have a design in mind. I have the pencils and the paper and the mind to create it. Well, I'll go ahead and share that Facebook um, link in the comments for everybody so they can find Mesmo Art. And there's a link, I think, to the Instagram on that as well. So you can find Mesmo Art yeah, Studio. Yeah, so Therapy Copper, where you can buy right. any of the products. Right. And that's that link has been shared and so that they can go ahead and buy all your stuff. Well, thank you, Mariah. I um, appreciate you. I appreciate So, So I wanted to jump on back here real quickly and say thank you all who are watching and um, remind you about the T-shirts and remind you that we will be back tomorrow from about 9 to 5 with artists all day long. We'll be in, popping in and out of the live stream with artists, so we will post that schedule for you later on in the comments as, and as well as the Tulsa Native American Day virtual market. So be sure to join us on that. Um, so let me see, who do we have next with us? Okay, we've got a couple more artists up. So I have Mary Beth. If she's ready, just raise your hand, Mary Beth, or we can go with, um, she's ready. Okay, we'll bring Mary Beth up. Mary Beth is with Moonhawk Art. How are you, Mary Beth? I'm great. I'm in the process. I was gonna try to do this without my glasses because I know there's a lot of glare. 
Um, I am in the process right now of creating a 10% off coupon for just this weekend. Um, so if you guys want to order hang loose after I get off of here, I'll finish that. And, um, and then I'll, I'll list the coupon code in the comments. So yeah, let me put this at full screen so I can take off my glasses here. Okay. There, no glare. All right. So I, um, yeah, as Lisa said, I'm Mary Beth Timothy. I am one short. I'm used to having my wonderful husband, John here with me. He's my partner in crime, love of my life, all of that. So he's my everything, but, um, he is helping family today. So I'm on my own. So I kind of feel like I'm teaching a class instead. Cause that's the only time I'm usually on any live events. So um, so together we are Moonhawk Art. We are based out of Muskogee, Oklahoma. We create original art. We also print our art, do a sublimation technique um, on a variety of items. We do like the cuff bracelets. We have wide and narrow cuff bracelets. We have um, coffee mugs. I have a coffee mug here. I do. We have coffee mugs. We do 11 ounce and 15 ounce and they are dishwasher and microwave safe. Guarantee. And, oh, good. So, and they're made in America and they're made by Native Americans. So, <laughs> And we also do ceramic tiles, which have the easel back and also have the little tabs on top. Usually we have like our booth set up. What you're used to seeing if you've seen us in any of these online shows we have our, our whole setup. Well, not whole, but like a compact version of our setup. Um, but we did our first in-person little, like a festival last weekend. So everything is packed up right now. And so I just have our jaclays and I don't, is there any originals here? Yes. These two are originals. So the bear. Oh, the bear. And shark two. And then this was the illustration or is the illustration for Tracy Sorrell's um, story in the anthology book, The Talk. So that's the original piece for that. Um, all the rest are Jaclay print. Some are limited edition, some are open edition. So um, you can find us at moonhawkart.com is our website. It's also got our Etsy store connected to our website. So just go into the shop part of that. Um, also, if you go on our website, you'll, the first thing that'll happen, you'll have a pop-up for a sign up to join our email list. And what that is, is I try to send out a mass email to our um, customers, collectors, anybody that, that wants to follow our journey. So I, I share a little bit about personal stuff going on, but mostly about new items, new images, new products that we've got, um, what shows we're doing. And then afterwards we might share photos from the show, tell how the show went, things like that. So, um, so yeah, if you want to go with us on our journey, then sign up for our email. Um, and you can always unsubscribe later if you don't like it, but if you want to follow but us, on, I'm sorry. Why would you unsubscribe? I mean, you get lots of good cut. You get background pictures of dogs. I know you get to see my dogs. They're wonderful. So anyway, but um, so you follow us on Facebook. We're under Moonhawk Art. Um, everything, everything is Moonhawk Art. We try to be consistent in that. So Facebook, Instagram. Um, I have a Twitter, but I don't use it at all. Um, yeah. <laughs> so the newest thing, next thing that will be done, I'm working with another Cherokee artist, Roy Boney Jr., um, illustrating a Cherokee book that's going to be coming out hopefully next year. So excited about oh, that. Exciting. Yeah, very exciting. It's a big project. And um, Chris Tuton is the author of that working with Hastings Shades' widow and his brother. 
And then, um, oh, and I'm working on a new podcast. So I have a podcast that I'm going to be hosting and it's going to be the business of native art. So that um, will be, I'm not sure when exactly it'll be coming out, but it's going to be very soon. So I'm super excited about that as well. Um, and if you follow us on any of our social media, I'll be sharing, you know, as soon as that comes out, if you're interested. Um, that's all I can think of that we have going on. And like I said, we'll have a 10% off coupon for anything in our Etsy shop. Um, if you see anything behind me that you like and you want to email us about that, because a lot of it's not in the Etsy shop, email us and inquire about it and we'll do a 10% off this weekend for that as well. Um, yeah. Do you have any events coming up in the future that you'll be live at in person? Yes, we will be. Okay. I'm sorry. I have to put my, my glary glasses on. Hold on. Hold on. Do, do, do. And if you follow us on social media, you'll know this because I posted on everything. Uh, ha, ha, ha. Okay, so next weekend, well, tomorrow we'll be here again with you. And then um, next weekend, we will be in Catoosa um, for the Catoosa Art Show, supporting the mission of the Stonebrook Project. It is Saturday and Sunday, October 17th and 18th at 1801 North Highway 66 in Catoosa. So if you have any questions about that, you can message me or email. And our email is also moonhawkart at gmail.com. And then we have some more virtual shows coming up. Um, so I know Cherokee Art Market. I don't know if we'll have anything for that. Um, but right now we're in... CSAM, which is Southeast Art Show and Market um, through the Chickasaw Nation. And if you go to our social media, you can find the link to that. Um, that's all I can think of. Well, that sounds like a lot. Yeah. And I talked really fast and I thought I got a lot of time to fill though, don't I? Wow. <laughs> Usually I'm the big talker and it's hard to get me off of here, you know? So I know, and this is a little bit more of expanded format too. Yeah, yeah. I was just so after seeing Cynthia <laughs> having to jump on before her time, I was like, man, I got to make sure I'm prepared. So I was like, making sure everything was right and sitting here, and sure enough, so <laughs> so. But I'm glad. Um, yep, I'm, I'm glad I could be here to shift today. a little bit. Yeah, I'm glad um, to be able to share with you guys. And if you have any questions whatsoever, feel free to ask. Um, we do ship. We ship all the time. As a matter of fact, I've got an order here that I was putting together um, before this started to go to Switzerland. So. Um, oh, wow. That's very exciting. Yeah, we actually um, we have a a returning customer from Switzerland and I've been chatting with her on Etsy. So, you know, that's one of the great things about doing this for a living. You meet so many people and I'm a people person, obviously. Um, so meeting new people and continuing that relationship with them, you know, that's why I like doing that email, you know, and, and we've gotten such a great response from that, from, from our friends and new friends and, and even gift shop owners, you know, contact me all the time. They're like, oh, thank you for sending that. That was so great. And I love seeing this. And so it's it's been really fun. I I am so fortunate that I can do this for a living. And not saying that it's not a struggle <laughs> because it's not easy. <laughs> so but um but we love it and you know it and it's a whole different kind of stress than than sitting behind a desk or, you know, working at a nine to five um, under somebody else. So it's, you know, you're, you're your it own. Boss, so, 
Sometimes you have to be oh. mean to yourself. <laughs> no, you do, you do bracelets too, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, I showed them. Yes. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. And so it was there, these original, yeah, original these design. Are, yeah, we do all the original artwork and then we do our own printing. Um, at some point, we are going to expand on our tiles and our mugs and have our um, supplier do our drop shipping. Um, and that way we can offer all of our images and, you know, expand out because we just don't have room to be able to hold that kind of merchandise here. But um, on the cuff bracelets, they are sublimated on a lightweight aluminum. And so they are adjustable and they're squeezed to fit. They're very, very, very lightweight. Super easy. I just, I form fit them to me because I don't like them to roll around. Super easy. And some people, you know, they, they like the wide ones. Some people like the narrow ones. I like the wide ones because they're more of like a, a statement piece. So whenever I wear them out, you know, whether I'm wearing jeans or dressing up for an event or whatever, I've got different ones for different things. And I always get some kind of a comment, you know, response from it. So, oh, 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 I do have something. Oh, so okay. tomorrow, tomorrow, hopefully... I'm going to try to work with John and get these put together. So our supplier called us and I've mentioned this. If you've watched us in the previous shows, our supplier called us our sublimation supplier. And she said, we've got a brand new product. I think you guys are going to love it. I think it's going to work well with what you do with your images. And so she got us all, you know, excited about it. So she sent us some samples and it is called Luma shell. And it's like a mother of pearl type um, shell. So we've got pendants and earrings, different shapes, different sizes. So I'm going to try to hold these up and see. We don't have them put together yet. So hopefully tomorrow I'll have some put together that I can show better. I have two that are put together that I can show you. And I don't know how well it's going to show on here. But um, so this is one of John's wolf images and these they're they're really like iridescent so i wish i wish that it showed better on the camera and i don't have great lighting in here either but um maybe if i hold it back like this you can kind of see i can see the iridescence in it yeah yeah so that's two of them. That's the oval ones, which we will have earrings. So like this, this is the little earrings for the wolf. Aren't they cute? And then another shape with that, the Southeastern designs that, that I showed you is the like a um, diamond. Oh, yeah. yeah. I had, don't think I saw that. Yeah. So we'll and have are those that. on the website? No, no. We're going to have to do a pre-order form for them um, so we can kind of see how they go. And here's the little earrings that'll match. Isn't that cute? That'll be so fun. Mm -hmm. So, and then we also have some of my birds. So the little matching earrings. And someone was asking if we were going to do a scissor tail. We do have one. And I had a cardinal on the oval necklace. It went to my mom. So here's the little earrings that'll match that. I wish it showed clearer. Okay. And... I have to show you all these samples. Sorry. Here's my little half wolf face. Hidden Agenda is the name of this. Mm. That one turned out really that. good. I like the background on it. And here. John's feathers. Anybody that's seen this feather design, this double feather design that John created, he actually created this for our um, 
wedding invitations or um, announcements, our wedding announcements. And it's called um, To Become As One. So it was very sweet. And hold on. Okay. To make sure it's not upside down. So I love this one. My spiders. Oh, okay. It? it took for a second for the computer to focus yeah. on it, but yeah, you can see it. Okay. Beautiful work, Mary Beth. Thank and you. So we're you super and John, excited. And most of your images are available on most of your products, aren't they? Yes, most of them. If if you see something like if you go onto our website and you see in the gallery part, it's kind of like our portfolio. So if you see an image there and you don't see it on anything in the shop, just shoot us an email. Um, ask us, you know, because a lot of times we can print it. But like I said before, we just don't have a lot of room for back stock. And so some of the times we'll print as we go. But we don't want to put too much of that out there either because we don't want to get overwhelmed and not have the product and then it run behind because we have to go to Joplin and pick up supplies. So, you know, but, um, but yeah. The oh, struggle. and we have bookmarks. These are aluminum bookmarks. Perfect stocking stuffers or, are. Look how or use as a gift tag on a gift you're giving. They're so cute. I just love them. Yeah. And we have magnets too. And they're boxed up. I don't have them with me. But they are. I don't know how big that is. A couple, couple of inches. Um, and they are also on the aluminum. So they have that real pretty sheer, you know, sheen to them. And they're most of the images that we have, we can do on those as well. So, and they're like $4. I don't have them on the website, but if you're interested in that, um, just email me and I can work something out, ship it to oh, you. Good to know. And I think we put your website in the comments, but there's been a few comments since then. So I'm going to go ahead and add that again. Okay. And I will as well. And also I'll go in and create that coupon, like I said. So, um, so yeah, if you order anything today, Sunday or tomorrow, Monday during our holiday, then, um, I'll put what you need to type in. I think I put our day, like O U R D A Y 20, our day 20. Yeah. So. Okay. So, yeah. So when you get that done, just add a link to that or Yes. Put it in the comments Girl. underneath sure. where you are. Okay. And thanks, Mary Beth. We're going to be. Thanks for having me. See you tomorrow. We'll see you tomorrow. Okay. I'm going to bring on our next artist. And we have Veronica Pipestem with us. How are you doing, Veronica? Oh, there we go. I had to get off of uh, mute oh. there. Um, <laughs> Oh. I'm good. I'm just um, I'm on some sinus meds, so I'm a little goofy. So I apologize in advance, and <laughs> uh, hopefully I'll be on top of it in the next couple of days. But um, other than that, I'm doing great. How are you? Doing pretty well here. I've been on. I don't think I've ever streamed this long, so this has been <laughs> an adventure for me. I can say that. <laughs> But thank you for joining us. Could you tell us, um, we know you're Veronica Pipeson. Could you tell us where you're from, what you make, and how you got started? Yeah, um, my name is Veronica Pipeson, and um, I am the owner of Itsumivi Creations, and I'm an enrolled citizen of the Ota Missouri tribe, an Osage head right holder, and of Potawatomi descent. I currently live in Skytook, Oklahoma. Uh, I started beading a few years ago because I love beadwork. And um, so that's kind of what I do is I mainly do bead weaving um, and mainly do earrings. Occasionally I will do a little bit of um, needle applique or other things like that. Um, I think I've started beading earrings more just because they're kind of a manageable 
bead project that can get done in, in a couple of days as opposed to something that kind of takes a really long time as you go forward. So um, that's that's what I do, uh, mainly deal in beads. <laughs> beads. Well, we are so glad that you do that. Your work is beautiful. Um, could mm -hmm. you tell us what inspires your work? Um, so anything, I, I, I live out in the country, um, as you can probably tell from sometimes my uh, occasional internet uh, connection issues. Um, and so I see things outside that I like, or I see um, different things that I, um, the colors are the things that really kind of inspire me. So I love uh, pileated woodpeckers. Um, those are some of my favorite birds and they have cultural significance for my people as well. And um, so that's something I, I tend to work with is the red, white, and black quite a bit. Um, but I also do a lot of other color combinations that I just see either in nature or just things that I think look good together. So um, the other place I draw a lot of inspiration from is um, ribbon work patterns and the colors that get used there and some of the designs that get used there. So for Osage uh, ribbon work patterns that I'm talking about. And um, there's things that I just um, like, especially old vintage uh, taffeta ribbon. There's, it's a hard, they're hard colors to recreate sometimes because they're hard to find them today, but sometimes you can find them in beads. So that's the other place I kind of take some inspiration from. Well, that's how, um... I am trying to find your link right now and I can't pull it up. So we'll get that added to the comments here so that everybody can find what you do. Um, do you have any pieces you've been working on or anything you'd like to show us today, Veronica? Yeah, let me um, post my link real quick. Or well, I guess I can't post it, can I? I will send it to you real quick. Um, you can buy things in my Etsy shop. And I just sent that, so hopefully um, that will come up. And I'm going to try something new here and sharing my screen, so we'll see how this goes. Uh, because the lighting isn't great in this room, I think it's just easier to um, go ahead and uh, let me see if I can get this up and running. And if you'll let me know if you can see my screen. Okay. Can you still hear me now too? No. Lisa, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, can you see my shared screen? It's showing up. There may be a little bit of a time lag between what we see okay. here and what's showing up. Okay, let me um, go ahead and get that started so I can kind of walk through that. Um, so this is one of the things that I have available right now. Um, it's just a pair of earrings. It's a double brick stitch and it's got this, the beads that are kind of shiny and which I love. They're my favorite beads right now. They have this um, silk finish on them and they're just beautiful, but they're so hard to photograph because of the finish on them. So the, the photograph doesn't quite do them justice. And this blue uh, kind of smoky gray blue color was so hard to find a match with it because it kind of, everything kind of blurs out the blue part, but these work great together. So these are some of my favorite, um, something that I, I have available in my shop right now. It's one of my favorite things. Um, it's coming in and out of my slideshow. There we go. Um, this next pair I should have available tomorrow um, on my website. Whoops. And um, this is a pair that's a brass finish and it's got gold, uh, 24 karat gold beads with a, a finish on them that's uh, like kind of an Aurora Borealis. So one of my favorite pairs. And this is also another pair that I'll have available 
tomorrow in my Etsy shop, and it's also brass. As you can see, I'm going through a bit of a brass phase. Um, I used to not like it, but I really like it uh, now, and it's apparently something I'm, I'm working with it quite a bit. And these are 24 karat gold beads that with black beads and then um, brass square tiny seed beads at the bottom. So, so 24 karat beads. Wow. <laughs> Yes, they're lovely to work with. And this is a dark gold finish, which is one of my favorites. So how much do your earrings, I was going to, sorry, Veronica, I was just wondering what the price range is on your earrings. So um, I have beads that start at, uh, excuse me, earrings that start, I think about 40 and they go up anywhere between 70 and 75. Uh, so they're pretty uh reasonable prices. Um, I try to pay myself an equitable wage for the time it takes me and then, you know, that sort of thing. But the, I would say that uh, my prices are pretty reasonable. I think they are for, for the work and the quality that's there. Well, thank you. Um, so the next piece I have in here is just something I was playing around with and I kind of liked the way it turned out. And these are, um, again, these are round beads that are here, um, round seed beads, rocales instead of uh, the delicas. I guess I'll show you the difference between those um, from here and some of the other pictures. And um, these are up and available in my Etsy shop right now. You can go and purchase them and they've got, um, silver uh, components with stainless steel ear wire. These are another uh, pair that I just recently finished. Whoops, my slideshow, sorry, it's not wanting to me. me. Um, and they are up in my Etsy shop as well. And they are also silver uh, components with a stainless steel ear wire. This is another Beautiful. pair, thank you. <laughs> This is another brass pair that I love and I haven't sold any of them yet. So maybe I'm the only person that loves these as much as I do. <laughs> but so there are these kind of if funky. Has some feedback in the comments. Let her know if you love these. I love them. They're, they're, they're long, but they're still dainty. So yes, I like that's what I, that's one of my favorite things about these is, and the, the photograph doesn't do it justice, but if you can kind of see there, there's a, couple of bins and zigzags in the in the brass finding that I think is really cool and just different. And then it's got a little beaded pendant on the bottom of it. So these are all brass, raw brass, the components are, and the ear wires. And then these are um, Yuki Delica beads. So I was talking about Roquelles earlier. Roquelle are, is a rounder finish. It's what you think of when you typically think of a seed bead. And these Roquelle, or excuse me, these Delicas are more cylindrical shape. So they're they give you a different finish and just a different texture when you do bead weaving. Um, now, another, oh, go ahead. Oh, I was going to ask you, so the beads used, are they traditional to your cultures or? Uh, Roquelle is something that gets used a lot more frequently and it's just a more standard bead. It's that round, again, it's that round bead that people generally think of when they think of beadwork. Um, and delicas, I don't know how long or how old delicas are. Um, they're, but they're some of my favorite things to work with. And so I like to be a little more contemporary about the things that I'm doing um, and in terms of the designs that I use. And so um, I just find that I like the finish of a, of a delica bead, that cylindrical finish when you're doing bead weaving. It's just a lot smoother. And it's just a different texture that I seem to appreciate more or prefer more as I work. Um, so I don't know if they're, um, I guess they're less traditional in that sense, um, but I don't think they've been around as long. Um, maybe Cynthia or somebody else that's a, a super bead sleuth will know more about um, <laughs> delicate and their availability and uh, as opposed to rocales or round beads. Um, the, the set I have here um, is another set that will, should be available tomorrow on my Etsy shop. Um, and it's also got tube beads or bugle beads in it. So these are more fringy, dangly uh, pairs that I, I really like. And I just like that kind of muted blue tone that's in these beads. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite. It's got bronze. Um, it's also accented with these bronze beads. So. 
It reminds me of Fringe on the last. Oh, I know. I think they're, I just love them. I just think they're um, really pretty because they are, they just have this muted tone to them that I find kind of soothing and calming. So um, some of my favorite pairs of earrings. Um, the next one I've got is again, those brass uh, findings that I love. And these are um, a dark red and a black uh, patented patent finish. So they're shinier than the other uh, pendants that I had previously shown. And then in the middle is some more 14 uh, karat gold beads. So those are some examples of what I have available. And um, now, um, Veronica, do you do one of a kind or if somebody wanted to get multiple pairs, how do you do that? Um, I do kind of, I make things that I like. <laughs> I don't have a great, uh, approach to this. I make things that I like, I put them out there, and then um, I can certainly make them again. So it will note that on my Etsy shop too. It will say it's a custom order and I will always give you feedback about that if you purchase from me to say I'm going to need a couple of weeks or, or a week and a half or whatever to, to get these out to you because I have to make them from scratch. They're not a finished product, but that will always be noted on my Etsy shop. Um, and so that's kind of how I do that is I would prefer to get the ones out that I already have. I'm sure everybody would, <laughs> but sometimes I have, um, there are things that I, I didn't think would sell that well, that just people just want them over and over again. So, um, that's kind of how I do that, but it will always be in my Etsy shop noted there. Well, that happens sometimes, whatever, we don't always predict what's going to be your best seller. And it's always a surprise. And then I don't know he how well it. this is going to show up, but um, this is another pair that I'm working on. I call them my David Bowie earrings. Um, oh. I just sold a pair of these that were red, and they have this stripe on them. I don't know how well you can see them in here, but I've started working with oxidized brass. Uh, so oxidized brass is black, and it's got an oxidized brass lever back. Uh, clasp with it, but it's, and it's not showing up super well in here, that it's a blush pink and a black design, but these are some of my favorites. And then someone else was talking about a pumpkin spice. Um, this is my ode to pumpkin spice. Uh, I, I did one too, because I was drinking a lot of pumpkin tea. And um, so these are, again, bead woven, um, but they're kind of a, a navy or cobalt and a, an orangey color with copper tube beads, uh, fringes. Um, and they're joined together. These two beads are joined together at the top with a copper, sorry, everything's backwards here, a copper, uh, a couple of copper beads. So there's a little space in the middle. Beautiful. Another one that's not up in my Etsy shop yet because I haven't photographed these. Um, so all of these are not up there yet, but they will be soon. This is a pair I finished last night. It's beaded around a silver component and it's got a stainless steel ear wire on it. Um, so it's got some bead woven designs. Let me see if I can get it any closer. It's this dark, deep red color. Again, kind of fall um, inspired and it's got some uh, spaces. I've got some little spaces in between my bead weaving. That's one of the things that I love kind of playing around with is space and light with really long fringes. So those are some things I have available. <laughs> it's all beautiful, Veronica. So you do wonderful work. Um, I did want to touch on a lot of our artists are actually, you know, full-time artists, but you're not. So, um, <laughs> But, so how did you get started in this? Um, so one of the things that I, I just have always loved beadwork. I've been around beadwork all of my life. My, my grandma did beadwork. She never, I don't think she did any bead weaving, but she did a lot of two needle applique and um, things for our, our, our Osage dance clothes. Um, and the thing that I think got me started was that I, I do, I just love beadwork, but a lot of times um, the beadwork that I love, I don't know that I necessarily want to wear just because it's so big. Um, and so we're in an office setting again, I, I do this very much part time. Um, 
And so I wanted something that I felt like I could wear in a number of different varieties of settings. And so I started to make smaller pieces uh, because I like small, elegant jewelry. And I wanted to combine those two things. So um, I have formal training as an archivist. So if you're, again, referring to my full-time job, so I'm really picky about making things that look delicate or durable and high quality so that they will last. Uh, so that's kind of how I got started there. But I'm also um, a librarian and archivist full-time. So that I, that's kind of, I'm trained to think long-term. And so one of the things I love doing is looking and evaluating materials on how long they will last. And raw brass has a pretty good uh, track record, stainless steel does, those sorts of things. Um, and so even down to the beads I buy and the finishes on them, I try to make sure that the beads that I uh, use won't fade or aren't as susceptible to heat and humidity in these hot Oklahoma summers. So it's all about the quality. Is yes, I try to make high quality things. So, and that's reflected in the price too, which yeah. is appropriate. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Veronica. I hope you can make it back with us tomorrow. Yes, thank you for having me. Appreciate it. And um, do I have it? So I will get with you on that schedule for tomorrow here in a little bit. But um, again, thank you. And I just wanted to come back on real quickly to let everybody know what's going on for tomorrow. So tomorrow um, we will be here with the Oklahoma Indian Festival. We'll be here with the Tulsa Native American Day. And we'll be popping in and out of this live stream all day from about 9 a.m. to 5 o'clock with different artists joining us. Um, who knows if some of them are working on projects that they have available tomorrow. And you'll get to see those live. And um, so we're going to start the day with Jan real quick. I'm going to add her real quick to the stream. And... Um, so Jan's going to be our first artist up at 10 a.m. tomorrow. And she's working away on a project that she hopes to have done by then. Oh, I think you need to unmute. You need to unmute. I can't unmute. How's that? That's much better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, I had to do what I call the frog stitch. I had to take it out. I wasn't happy with it, so I have to start all over again. <laughs> Oh my goodness, I was going to ask you to show us your progress. <laughs> I wasn't happy with it. It was looking kind of wonky, so I thought, nah, we're not doing that. We're taking it out. So I took it out, and we're starting over here. <laughs> A lot like when you quilt, you can just take it and rip out all the stitches and start all over again. Exactly, exactly. So, so you'll be up first with us tomorrow at 10 a.m., right. and, and if we need be, we'll, if you don't finish it, you have to tear out again. We'll pop back in maybe later on to see your finish. Yes. Uh, a bracelet. What do we yes. call it? Not a bracelet. It's going to be a bracelet, yes. It's okay. just um, a wider one. Yes, it's going to be about two inches wide. It's going to be made uh, like we do our Cherokee bead weaving purses and bandoliers and stuff like that. And that's how I'm going to do it is using the wool and the two needle applique and, and silk ribbon and all that to get it. Uh, it's going to be beautiful, Jan. Thank you. I hope so. <laughs> and I've already done ripped it out, like I said, because I wasn't happy with it. Uh, and of course, I know us artists, we all pretty hard on ourselves because we just want to make sure it's right just for our, our customers, you know, so. Right. Right. Well, thank you again. And one more question. Who's bringing the coffee? You or me tomorrow? Well, it have to be you. I don't drink it. <laughs> You're also about 90 miles away, too. So that's not going <laughs> to I used to, but I haven't drunk coffee in probably about a year now. So I'll probably have OJ or sweet iced tea, one of the two. <laughs> so Mary Beth's confused. 
of the coffee <laughs> comment, but so this is gonna have you coffee in the morning. So again, thank you, Jan, and we'll see you first you. thing first thing in the morning. Well, not first thing, but after our first cup of coffee. So thank you everybody for joining us. Whether you joined us from the beginning and watched all the way through, or you're just joining us, or you watched a little bit earlier. Um, we invite you to go back and rewatch the live stream. It will be available for you to watch later and um, go like, follow, purchase, support these artists because without live shows or in-person shows, they don't get that feedback from you. And um, so again, thank you. And we will see you tomorrow. Have a great evening.